We're live. <laughs> Welcome to the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival. <laughs> Guys, this is fucking awesome. Um, long day ahead of us. Let's take it easy. Slowly, yes. slowly does it, right? I think uh, two sessions. We're here from 12 through 8. I know that you guys have been here for a few hours already this morning. Lots of exciting stuff. Uh, obviously, for all of you guys at home, if you don't know what we're up to, we did an episode with Graham and Serena not long ago. Uh, we are finally here now at the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival today. As always, joined by my good friend, Ian Posh Scotch. Hello. How are you doing, my guy? Yeah, I'm good. Good, good, Glad good. Glad to be here. Always good to see you. And Stevie, looking fresh, I might add. Hey, mate. Nice hat, nice shirt. I took a uh, leaf out of your book mate, today. Very sexy. Yeah. We've been uh, shopping on All Saints. We wanted to look good for you today. <laughs> Stevie and I didn't realize we I'm gonna were have shopping. To, I'm going to have to bleep that out. They're not paying us for that. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to bleep the All Saints out. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that cost them uh, cost some them good money. money. This is exciting, guys, right? Very, very exciting. And we've got uh, a real wonderful festival drown, which I've already tucked into, but if you guys want to point something... I have not had a uh, drop of that yet. Pass that over yeah, to yeah, Stevie yeah. there, Ian. I don't know if that's a clean glass. glass. Oh, if you need one. Glass. My so, festival bustling. Royal Brackler, 14? 14. 14-year-old... 14 Matured in Fino and Muscat casks. Yeah? That's an interesting combo because obviously, interesting combo. you know, Fino, very dry oh, and light sherry. Very delicate, right? Yeah. You know, very delicate. Uh, I find that Fino mixed with anything can be interesting. Well, and the color of this doesn't look delicate, right? No, anything but, right? Anything but delicate. Um, so there's quite a lot of information on this. Um, so it was said it was in a first fill Muscat Barrique for a couple of years. That's mm -hmm. the exact wording on the back. And then finished in a first fill Fino Sherry Hogshead for three and a half months. Oh, okay. Wow. So not much time in Fino at all. No. The delicacy definitely comes through. I have to say it is dry. It is tannic. It's a fucking beast, to be honest for you, yeah. with you. Like... It's uh, the color alone. It's not shy in the glass. That's what we were just saying. They haven't even tucked in. Dark. That is seriously dark whiskey, especially for only 14 years old. 51.4%. Uh, for all of you guys at home, you know I love Royal Brackler, the King's Own whiskey. Really, really good quality malt. And. Uh, well, that is rich and sticky and... And it takes the sherry so well, right? Yeah. It's that rich, robust sort of liquid that can take yeah. any sort of maturation. I have to say, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best integrated with the Muscat and the Fino. It's lovely, but it's kind of funky. There's a lot going on in the glass, There's right? a lot going on. It's really, really kind of heavy on the kind of burnt sugars, the caramels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well... I guess at some point we're going to get the guys on to talk a little bit more about it, right? Graham will cut, swing through at some Graham point shortly. No what doubt we, he's very proud today. of this. He should be. This is delicious. Let's and tell the people at home who else we have coming up on this episode. Who have we got? God, we've been running around the room trying to figure out who would be best to showcase for you guys. Obviously, when you're at a festival like this, there is so much choice. Uh, I have to say, I think the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival have done exceptionally well in their selection of brands. It's not just anyone and everyone, but there is a very good variety here. Uh, Ian, who have we got on first? So we're going to be causing chaos. We're going to be pulling brand ambassadors off of their stands. Love it. You're going to go all day winter, aren't you, on us? Uh, I'm going a supermarket, supermarket sweep, sweep through the yeah. festival. <laughs> when you hear the sound of that beat. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right, so who's the first in the, in, in the one aisle know, dash? I, I dress as bright as I can. Uh, you know, rest in peace, Dale. Um, <laughs> we've got Cadden Heads. Uh, we've got uh, Duncan Taylor. We've got Weems. And we've got Woodrose of Edinburgh coming up on this episode. Cool. All um, right. No idea what order. We're going to pull them out. Whoever is willing to come over whenever we're ready to bring a new guest on. Okay. Well, shall we try and start with Graham? Do you want to go and... Uh, hunt him down. Hunt him, hunt him down? down? Right. I'm going to... If you don't, if you don't have much luck, uh, get someone else, whoever so, you can. I've got the selfie cam, and we're going to look to see what we can do and uh, splice a bit of this footage in. So apologies, some of you are going to have to look at my face. Go 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 go! go, 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 go. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Stevie, obviously you've been uh, chilling here for a little bit. 
Anyone taking your eye? Any brands, I should say, sorry, taking your eye? Do you know what, mate? <laughs> um, yes, I want you to go and try, uh, you know, the indie guys Octave. Yep. Uh, I hope they've got their Springbank 98, I want to say, or six. Okay. Um, obviously, it's all finished in Sherry Octave, their stuff. Had that at the whiskey show. That was incredible. They've got to cover other things. They've got a Macallan. Check them out. Also, do you know what? Fragrant Drops are here. I've never tried their stuff, so I'm looking forward to tucking in. We're actually going to do a whole episode with Fragrant Drops, so no worries. For sure, for sure. It's Ian, ah. isn't it? It is Ian. Ian, lovely to see you, sir. Ian. Welcome to Uncut and Unfiltered. Ian, if you just uh, pull that mic a little bit closer, it's got a base there. So just if you grab it from the base, it, mate, yeah, just pull it in. Yeah, point it towards you. About four or so, five inches away from your mouth. Turn, turn the mic in. There we go. Perfect. Is that okay? Absolutely, I'll yeah. I'll stay sitting back here. Welcome in. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> I'm good. Nice. To, how are you doing? All right? Yeah, good, man. Good. You've good. got a... You had a flock of people over your stand when you when you opened the doors there. Yes. How's it going with the festival ball then? How many, how many have we sold already within... I have kind of lost hour? count. It was, a, it was quite a lot. I think we're through at least 20... We're probably at least through about 25 at the start, which is really... I mean, you know, it's a £100 pound bottle, so it's not... Yeah. You know, it's not for it's not for everyone in terms of affordability, but with a thirty pound Doddy donation as well, it's free. Uh, it's fucking delicious. It's well worth a hundred pounds. I'll tell so you. Did you write you a number on? Because you haven't. You've currently got a blank bottle. I don't mind. Listen, I'll take whatever number you're willing to Are give you sure? me. But Ian, I also want you to. Wait, will you have a sup with us and, and tell us what you think of this? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. If you've you're got a glass that. going, because I have not drunk any yet. You've not tried it. Not today. Oh. And not since it went. Need a fresh, not fresher. <laughs> There you go, you're number 52. I hope that's a significant number. I don't know if it is or not. I love the number 52. It's one of my favourite numbers. <laughs> oh my Turning into an episode of Sesame Street as well. Sorry? Turning into an episode of Sesame Street. How's that? You have to, like the count. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah. The, the count. count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 52. Yeah, today, kids, we're going to learn about the letter B and yeah, the number 52. 52. You're very good popping it like I that. I missed that. Okay. Uh, it, it does kind of pain me slightly when people just buy it just for collection. I'm like, no, we collection. Yeah, a no, royal brackler of racket. Sort of oh, no, no. That's for you, Ian. Absolutely, sir. Well, Have we all got? We've got enough. Yeah. All right. So, what's your involvement with this dram now? The involvement with the dram, um, in terms of so, in, in terms of the whiskey itself, uh, and then I can come on to the festival. But yeah, in terms of the whiskey itself, so we, we're indie bottlers, so we just uh, obviously buy casks, whether they're young and age them for a bit. And, and sorry, Ian, when you say we, you mean yes. fib whiskey? Fib yeah? whiskey. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I was. Just, I should, I should have that. asked it a little bit more directly. No, 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 no. That's quite right. Fib, uh, fib whiskey. Yes, we are independent bottlers. It's a very tiny company. It's just myself and my brother. Um, and then that's his, uh, his girlfriend, Hannah, helping out uh, stoically. Um, so we're based in Fife. We're based in Kirkintilla. Uh, Kirkintilla? Um, that's not Fife, that's Glasgow. We're based in Kirkcaldy. Someone was just talk talking to me about Kirkintilla. <laughs> we're based in Kirkcaldy, so that's where like all the, the, the secret uh, whiskey is kept. Uh, but all the casks at the moment actually are looked after for us uh, by the Oxen Bond. Okay. Uh, so for this one, the involvement we had with it, we bought it. Um, it's a it's a 14 year old Royal Brackler, so Highland whiskey. We bought it when it had already been re racked into the Muscat, or I should say Muska. Uh, apparently, that's the correct way to say it. Sure um, having just I've just been in France for the Rugby World Cup, so I've come. We've been to a few wine tastings <laughs> and stuff like that. So apparently, it's Muska. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, we bought it when it was already in the Muska, and then basically what we did was we put it in Fino Sherry as well for about uh, four months uh, to give it because it, it was it was a lovely drop as it was after the Muska. It was a little bit drier, so this is kind of. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you guys see what you think of it, but I think it's kind of sweetened it, let it evened it out a wee bit. Um, I find that quite. I don't know. I'll let you guys see how you how you find. I'll put notes in your in your. In We've your, already your been heads. discussing it to yeah. be honest. Oh, yeah. There are absolutely no notes going to be put into our heads. Don't worry. We were sort of saying. I think Ian and I are very much agreeing. There's that rich, caramelised, almost edging on burnt sugar. Right. Uh, really, really delicious, treacly. Um, it's interesting to hear. So, sorry, do you know how long? Presumably, it was just in an ordinary bourbon hogshead yes. for. A, do it you know was how long? In bourbon for about twelve years, and then okay. it's about about two. Uh, I think it's between eighteen, well, eighteen months and two years in the in the muscat. Okay. And obviously, it's an unusual. Yeah, because it's an unusual one because muscat is usually a, a white, a light, a, like a it's a white wine yeah. normally. Um, so this has obviously been one of the kind of. Um, 
more you sometimes get like fortified muscat ones that are like it's more like dessert it's usually about 18 percent you can get them from australia you can get them from some places in europe as well um i'm waiting to find out more details about which winery it came from but yeah it was basically a dark muscat grape because we weren't expecting it to come out that color no that color is all muscat that's not the sherry that's a happy surprise yeah it was yeah. a happy surprise it's our favorite type of surprise yes you can <laughs> this is, otherwise no one can ever buy anything again and that's very bad <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's really interesting. Obviously, so you got the like the darkness has come from this guy. It's a dark muscat, yeah. and then also you were saying that you put it then to kind of almost freshen it up a bit in the fino. Yeah, always people associate the kind of drinking of fino with being quite a dry. Yeah, sherry. It's it's so interesting how it can have very different effects, like yeah. on the whiskey from the cast. Totally, um, it's a weird one actually because what we do at Fib is we um we kind of do this before and after thing with all our all of our releases where when we get a cask of whiskey, a single cask, what we do is we bottle half of it exactly as we got it from the, the distillery and then we'll rewrite the second half um, and then and finish it in something and then we can basically do it before and we'll release them both before and after so you can try the same single cast before and after finishing yeah. even though this one was a festival bottling this is actually the second half of the before and after so we did the first half of this bar uh, this uh, muscat one uh, we just did it before the fino um, we bottled it for the Spirit of Alba Festival. That's probably oh, why I've got a okay. in my head as well. Uh, so that's uh, that was done for them. And this is the second half of the same cask, but in the Fino. Uh, I've got to so, ask you then, yeah. which do you prefer? I can't say that because Craig, will hate, Craig or, uh, or, or, the, or uh, Serena and, uh, and Graham will hate me. But um, You've got to pick. This, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards this one because I love what the Fino has done to it. Okay, um, okay. And obviously uh, the artwork and all the Doddy Weir influence and stuff and the charity. Yeah, I have to say, yeah, on the bottling side of things, it is a beautiful bottle, an Thank incredible you. label, really, really nicely done. You see these sort of, you know, event bottlings or special, you know, Sometimes they can look pretty naff, right? Yep. And I think the wonderful thing about this, yes, like you say, it's not a cheap bottle, it's 100 pounds, but of that, 30 pounds is going to a great charity, okay? So we're already at 70 pounds, which is a very reasonable price for 14 year old Rackler. But this is a really wonderful little bottle. I'm, I'm going to be really proud to put that on my shelves, do you know what I mean? Well, it doesn't just, look I'm like it's from, from an event, it looks like it's part of a really nice lineup. Oh, well, thank um, you very much. It's, it's, no, it's, listen. It's not Props, everyday that props is due. Right. Like, you Correct. Know, how many other Muscat and Fino no, bottles have got weird, on the it? shelves? It's quite right? wacky. It's very, very strange, uh, yeah. No, I'm not sure I've even got another Muscat finish on my own. No, they're not I the don't. most common in the cast. You, get, you no. can get more Madeira and stuff like that, yeah, I suppose, absolutely. in Muscat, yeah. Um, so, no, it was a... Uh, it was, um, yeah. I mean, it was an interesting one to choose. There's a fair bit of, like, Sauternes knocking around, but then, like, Muscat less and then dark muscat i imagine is a small percentage of that as well exactly right? yeah so. no it's art muscat's not very common at all i've got one um, weirdly enough one of the common types comes from australia and it's a type called brother glen muscat if you ever see a bottle like if, if you've got a sweet tooth you've got to try it it's just like you know it's these little half bottles and you'll have it at christmas yeah, yeah. dinner after and it just tastes like oh obviously we'll be having this christmas dinner this year <laughs> but it's, it's just like drinking it's, it's kind of like it's a bit like the saturn's kind of late harvest type thing yeah. you know where there's a, an extra sugar content in the grapes and it just makes it so much more treacly. So it's obviously been in a kind of a cast that's had that kind of wine in it. Right. I love it. Lads, opinions? Oh, it's like sticky toffee pudding in a glass for me. Sticky toffee pudding. That's such it's, a good it's note. It's really good. I'm thinking of... Um, sun-made raisins again but like the juice if you were to like squeeze a load of juice out yeah, of yeah, raisins, yeah, yeah. that sort of really sugary lovely yeah it's delicious you're actually Stevie's now anchored me as well I'm going to go for a slightly different dessert <laughs> and go for a bit of tiramisu because there is a bit of kind of like slightly kind of burnt <laughs> off and it's got that kind of boozy kind of like you know it's like, like the silk sponge, sponge. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 whole silk sponge one of my yeah. favourite damn things in the yeah. world <laughs> honestly <laughs> Like, yeah. my nana used to make the best trifle where, you know, she put half a bottle of sherry in the damp thing. <laughs> I, I don't have many favorite damp things, but that would be one of them. <laughs> oh. What a whiskey, though. Really, really lovely. Oh. Um, and the cause as well. It's great that, so we've got 100 bottles of it. I think actually we've got about 104, maybe. Okay. It, it, it wasn't quite 100, so we've got slightly more. Um, so it's going to be a £3,000 donation minimum to My Name's Doddy, which is awesome. Um, That's amazing. You know, no, I wouldn't, you know, because I, I love rugby. Uh, I grew up when Doddy 
Bernie Weir was at the end of his career. Like, right. uh, uh, yeah, because he played. Yeah, I started watching rugby for the first time in like 1999, probably, and that was the last time Scotland won. Well, the Five Nations at the time, so we were forever Five Nations champions. That cannot be because uh, <laughs> that tournament doesn't exist anymore. Um, so yeah, I mean, are you guys? Are you are you egg chasers at all, or not? Not so much. I'm very much looking forward to the uh, rugby this evening. I'm oh, yeah. Irish, yeah, and it's the oh, first time we might be getting oh, through no. to the semis. Well, I, think, so. I think this interview's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's be a little tender after the beating. That you I was took there, man. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I that's unfortunate. That I've is never felt so outnumbered in my whole life. <laughs> I think there was rumours of sixty thousand compared to fifteen thousand. Really? Sixty thousand Irish fans. It was Ow. a sea of green. Okay. Never seen anything like it. Wow. Mental. No, I mean we we are showing out. I've got all of my cousins and aunties and uncles over in Paris this evening some of them have tickets some of them are out there just looking to scalp tickets so uh, yeah I'm buzzing obviously this finishes at 8 I will be straight across the road into a bar looking straight into match. the Murrayfield what's it called Murrayfield Hotel or something like something that something like, right. wherever will take yeah, yeah, yeah. me wherever I can stumble into to be honest yeah yeah um but listen, this is delicious. I'm really, really enjoying it. Obviously, for anyone who's watching at home, it is just a dram for the day, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, you also touched on the charity, which is something that we'll talk about throughout the day. We're going to pop a link in the description, though, yeah? Absolutely. Link yeah. in the description below, guys. It'd be great if you could, anything you can afford. Uh, you know, donations are really, really uh, helpful for this sort of thing. And to be honest, with these sorts of charities, they're not really government backed. So we really are reliant on you guys uh, on events like this. Uh, and on the kindness of people's hearts. So please do, if you can, drop a donation, or if not, share it. Somebody else will donate, right? Uh, exactly. With that being said, should we have a little roundup on this dram? A buy, oh, a don't yeah, buy, or an course. oosh? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm personally loving it. I've already bought a bottle. I'm kind of considering, would it be worth buying a second one to keep? Because well, like you say, to. one per person. I know, but... I know, you'll have to get one of these two. I'm going to get somebody, yeah, exactly. I'm going to get one of you guys to sneak in. Why are you dubbing me in? Maybe some mate? commission on top yeah, of Yeah, I'm going to flip it to you. <laughs> just to walk <laughs> over there. But like you say, it's nice to have something of this bizarre sort of finish on your shelf, right? I, I'm, I'm excited to share this. And there's only a hundred bottles you said as well 100 bottles wow. about 104 you're prob they're pro half of them are probably gone already so hopefully they'll be gone I mean if there's any left we'll be selling them online they probably won't be probably nah, will not, I can't probably imagine will not that. Have no 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 they the won't. that queue is growing yeah, no, exactly. yeah 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 and it was a nice I mean it was Graham and Serena and Graham's dad Alan I think, he, I think it was Alan uh, who actually chose the Reps of Dram so we actually when we were offered to do the festival bottling we were having a chat with him beforehand yeah. yes yeah yeah they're all saw, loving their work the they've tried it a few times yeah, now yeah. they all like it so it's great we sent a few to them and it was between this and a port and das we weren't they weren't sure which way they were going to go but I'm, I'm pretty pleased they went this way i think it's like the color of it just looks so good with the doddy oh beautiful the doddy tartan really is so. yeah ian then buy don't buy what's your rating easy mate it's fine it's a strong buy it's right strong buy. strong buy easy yeah especially for you a brackler i mean you're also a brackler lover stevie yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a strong buy right here, as you Giving say. Buying vibes all round. Thirty percent of it, you know, the the, the proceeds go to charity. Yeah. You know, can't go wrong. It's absolutely delicious, as you say. Very unusual uh, and very a, a cool bottle to have there and share with people when uh, they pop round that won't taste it very often. Ian, is it? Um is it cast strength? It is cast strength. It is cast strength. We haven't washed down anything as of yet, and we never plan to. Okay. Really. Oh, right. Fair play. Yeah, right, cool. Yeah. It was just like, I mean, I always just think that's something that, you know, I wouldn't want to water something down when that's basically ruined a dram for someone. Um, anyone can add water afterwards if they want to. So, yeah, we'll never add water to our whiskey, I promise. Fair play. I like it. I like it. I have to say, at 51.4, it sits really nicely, right? Yeah. I think that there is some slight disparity between the Fino and the Muscat. Mm. Not that it's unenjoyable. It's just the Fino doesn't quite link into it. Whatever. However, I do like the kind of the slight battle, that seriously dry Muscat. Mm. and almost like the the light sweet and I'm getting almost like a perfumey note from the Fino almost mm. on the nose it's really really nice the way the two sort of argue it Jostle. out on the yeah, palate yeah, 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 yeah I like yeah. that you know sometimes you don't want it to be perfectly integrated yeah. you want no. that little yeah yeah, yeah. It's I think it's wonderful like it was kind of like that with the first blend that we did with um, Last, uh, no, I say it was this year actually, and we did a blend of two single casks, uh, like one grain, one malt, just like a double, basically a double single cask type thing. Uh, and yeah, it was like it was very much like you were describing. It right. was like you could pick out both both of the cask influences. You should. Uh, I have to try and get you a dram at some point. I haven't got any with me today, but I'll get you a dram in the post if if uh, if nothing. Else.
something else of the just the muscat. I would be the, so keen to try it. And you can do a little side by side. Yeah, 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 yeah. That see would be see very how cool. much you've upgraded it. I think the Fino is definitely adding a good bit to it. Uh, so some I, some I think I can agree with you. Though. It's just like, yeah. Oh, listen, absolutely. Each to, own, yeah. Each to their own. But I think everyone who's buying a bottle today is going to be very fucking happy with their purchase. Let's <laughs> I'm put glad it that you think way. so. I'm glad you think so. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. And open your bottles as well. Yeah. Say it again. Open your bottles. Oh, you know. Anyone who's not opening their bottles. Get them Come on. And if Very you, bold. If you end up keeping it and reselling it on the, the whiskey market in 10 years, still got to donate 30%. True. That's true. <laughs> try and That's try, very, very try true. and police that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ian. No worries. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I'll let you get back to your stand. Uh, You've got a big queue growing again. Yeah. But no, nice, nice to meet you all. Thank Lovely you so much. Likewise. Likewise. And, um, yeah. No, thanks, thanks for having me over. Thanks again, man. Just launch your The rest of the event. <laughs> you too. Nice one. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, first dram down. And what, what a dram to start. What a dram to start. Bosh. Strong. The King's Own Whiskey is here. Very strong, yeah. That's really yummy. I like it. It is good. I really like it. It is good. For someone with a sweet tooth. Yeah, exactly. Really, good really whiskey, like it. whiskey, great brand as well. I know it's not a brand that we focused on yet on the podcast. Yep. Not one that I particularly know a huge amount about. But really nope. lovely to hear how small it is. You know, it's two guys. You know, obviously, they've got their missus here today, helping out, pouring a few drams, having a bit of crack. Lots to come out of that brand, I think, especially if this is the way they're treating yeah. their, uh, their liquids, you know? Although, how do you feel about the not watering down stuff? Uh, I, I was going to sort of say something there, but then, you know. I wasn't going to have an argument with him. You know, <laughs> we, we've talked about this. Like, I'm shit at putting water in. Like, in how does this sit for you at 51.4, though? I think that sits very... It doesn't need water. doesn't need it. Maybe you, later on in the show, we'll go back to it. Maybe I'll try it with a little bit of water. We can do a bit of compare and contrast. But... <clears throat> for sure doesn't need it i think it's a good sentiment to have not to you know that to be your kind of brand ethos we don't water down as long as you just don't bottle it not for the sake of it but like you taste it yeah. it's not ready yet let's leave it until it comes down naturally yeah, yeah, not yeah. just oh that's all right let's get well, it out without strength out, yeah you know also you know it whilst you can't add alcohol back in and you can add water to yourself. There is nothing wrong with whilst you're kind of, you know, you're out of the cask, you're in an IBC, taking some samples, adding a bit of water, getting the hydrogen out, and going, right, what tastes better? We, we do it all right? the time, right? We do yeah. it all the time. And at the end of the day, like, if you're there and you're able to be there for the, your time of bottling, why why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, look, I agree. I, I can see both sides, to be honest, yeah. you know? I think that when it comes to this sort of a dram and the alcohol is well integrated, I agree with what Ian said. I agree with what Fibian said, right? Because ultimately watering it down from 51% lower it's going to change it for some people and I think that it sits really nicely how it is in the glass yeah. however I agree when you're looking at whiskies that are coming out 60, 62, 64, 60 plus percent not everyone wants that and it can be quite off-putting particularly for newer drinkers so I think that there is something to be said for kind of toying around with your liquid making sure that it sits nicely in the glass but no complaints on this one I think it works perfectly at cask strength it's cool I'm very proud of that and the label now. is really cool as well really very, nicely very cool. done yeah, no, really, really nicely cool. done. All right, so we've done the first one, the festival bottling. Festival Our bottling. job is kind of done now, guys. We just need to have the crack for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, well, we can turn the cameras off. We can just go have a few drams. Oh, not turn the cameras off. We're going to have the crack. <laughs> we keep everyone involved at home. Yeah. So what's the first brand that we're going to bring in? Oh, I mean, I just go and find whoever. We've, we've got those four brands we've agreed are going to come on this episode. You don't mind which way we do it? I'm just going to see I'm who's going, ready. Go around that way, see who's ready, see who's got. Run off, let's grab someone. Snatch them up now. Let me get the shaky hand cam. And um, we've already been papped. <coughs> we've, we've been papped already. We've been papped, have we? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Ian. Well, look, let me hand over oh. the camera. Obviously, if people listen to this on Spotify, Apple, or tell you what, man, Google, you're not going to be able to. Empty and this whiskey is still potent. Yeah, yeah. Still this part, but if you head over to our the YouTube, aroma, you will be able just... to watch Ian running around the festival. So, what you mean you're not going to splice the audio in from the different? Oh, I could do, mate. If you're going <laughs> to chat to them, yeah, go for no, it. No, it's fine. Right, you're recording. Back with a handy cam. Cheers, Stevie. Let's go. Right, let's go. Let's go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> That's just naughty sauce, man. 
Serena, how you doing? <laughs> Serena. Just enjoying the uh, the festival dram. Oh, it's stunning. It's, it's so good. Stunning. It's so good. We're just telling people at home. Oh, 100%. 100%. We'd be honest. We would be very honest. Worth the £100 through and through. I'm just hoping that everyone's opening their bottles. That's the only worry. Well, listen, you guys can have two, but everyone else is one per customer, right? I was saying we need to make sure we need to be pressuring people, peer pressuring them into opening their bottles, right? I'm on it. Don't worry. Fuck that. No, get it down. <laughs> Nice one, guys. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> nice one. Oh. Uh, Jake, brands today that you're looking forward to tucking into. Anything you've seen? I know you've only kind of got here a little bit later than us, but... Yeah, well, we're going to do an episode with Fragrant Drops, I think. Sure. Yeah. Which is an independent bottling company that I've sort of, you know... Have you tried do... anything yet from them? I I've tried nothing, man. They've got a 29-year-old, I think it's a North British, it's a grain. Yeah. I think it's a North British, 29-year-old. And I was saying to George... I want to try this, like I wanted to buy it for my birthday because every year I've tried a, a, a whiskey that is my age statement on my birthday. Sure. 29 was the first year I haven't done that since I was 25. Yep. 24 actually. Um, now I've drunk a few 29 year old whiskeys since, but I'm really excited to try that one. And we're actually going to get them in for a whole episode just on them, cool. probably at halftime or something. Cool, cool, um, cool. So I'm really excited to have a chat with them. Uh, equally, um, was, it, was it Woodrow? Woodrow. It's, uh, it's an independent bottler. They are local. Um, I, to be honest with you, I haven't actually heard of them before. Ian's going to grab them shortly and they're going to be involved in this episode. They had some really cool stuff, man. They had a Pulteney. They had a nine-year-old Ben Nevis, which looks and apparently tastes naughty. One of the, the girls behind in. the brand, she was telling me this Ben Nevis is like bizarro. And then Ian spotted that they've also got, I think, an 11-year-old Bunner which is like dark like this, man, like seriously. All single car stuff, presumably? Yeah, I, I think all single cast. Yeah. I'd be surprised if any of them are, are, aren't, but um, we will find out shortly. Cool. So yeah, look. Oh, that I'm, bonus I'm, sounds, uh, I'm buzzing for I bet, uh, all. Uh, Ian's I'm eyes all. lit up when he saw that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I was saying, what do you think? I was like, I want the Ben Nevis, man. He went, dude. They've got Buna. <laughs> just ask them. Just fucking get it. Get it solidified. Yeah. It's like a kid in a candy shop. It really is. I tell you what, though, man. This is like. Sorry, I don't want to keep going on about the same whiskey. This is the only one that we've had in our glass. But the aroma of this. It's interesting. You said you get that perfumey note because I was getting more of a floral kind of type note in there, and you're sort of saying that comes from the pheno, maybe. That's what I'm kind of getting your from opinion. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But very like touches. I'm getting yeah. very light touches. Almost like I say, battling out against that dryness of the sherry. There's a uh, sorry of the muscat. Sorry, there's that slight sweetness of the fino sherry. Um, you know, but but on the nose, ever so slightly perfume. Yeah. But but now that the glass is empty, it's just rich. It's prune juice. Very it's rich. Raisins. But it's not sickly either. You know, there's some like rich, sticky, no, 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 sweet. No. Uh, liquid. It's, the, it's, it's, it's on the edge, though. It's on the precipice of being too yeah, sweet. Yeah, exactly. And it's sitting in that, just that <laughs> bubble of just heavenly sweetness, mate. It's what a good. good pick for their festival very, very bottling. Good. And it's interesting like, that they were saying they were thinking maybe, oh, maybe a Port Dundas. Mm. I think when you're going to do a festival bottling, when you want a good chunk of money going to charity, a single malt of a Royal Brackler sort of calibre, of a 14-year-old age statement, with this sort of finish, it allows you to charge that £100 price point. I didn't even bat an eyelid. Most people aren't batting an eyelid. They can no. tell it's going to be worth it through and through. Yep. And again, like we say, getting that £30 donation to charity, you know, that's the only way that you can maneuver these things. You have a £50 bottle, you're not going to be able to get that much to charity. So I think, yeah, un unequivocally, I would have been picking this, having not even tried the Port Dundas. You wouldn't have needed to give it to me, right? Just get that in the bottle <laughs> right now. It's fucking good. Really, really impressed. Yeah, it is really, really cool. Really, really cool. put this glass down, man. I'm starting to uh, fall in love with the, the smell of a whiskey. So what about yourself, Stevie? Whilst we're waiting for Ian to come back around. Yep. 
anyone here today well, or like any I said, particular just before, um, the other Ian came you on. You were saying about the Octave guys. Octaves guys, guys we're gonna yeah. Get them over. I can't coming remember over. their, like, uh, you know, the main company they're called. Uh, Duncan Taylor, isn't it? It is Duncan Taylor, yeah. sorry. They're yeah, yeah we're getting them over in a bit. Cool, cool. So they've got Octave. Uh, they've also got, ah, uh, oh, that blend. Um, not. It's called, like, Black Bear or oh, something. Red, uh, red no. Bull, Black Bull, Black Bull. Black Bull. Black Bull. Black Bull. Black Bull. Um, that was really nice actually I tried that at the whiskey show uh, so yeah those guys um, to be honest mate kind of just been setting up haven't really had a look around just itching to get going uh, obviously uh, you guys at home the sound is going to be a little bit different today and I'm sure you can appreciate it there is also uh, live cooperage going on so you're going to probably hear some uh, loud banging but you know and right behind us actually we have Perno we got the lovely Janice, who I would said, come on, but she's on her own today. I said hello as she came in. She is non-stop at the minute, she man. Is. She was down at the whiskey show with you guys. Mate. Up here now this weekend, man manning the whole stand And I think there's herself. Glasgow Festival in a few she's weeks. She's going back well. down for, for um, London Cocktail Week. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she's up, she's down, she's all around. She's Janice everywhere. Janice is covering she it for Pano. She's everywhere. doing an amazing job as well. Good for her. Really, here we really go. Cool. And he's back. Ian, who have you brought with you? James. James, lovely to see you, sir. Cheers, mate. Jake. <laughs> nice to see you, man. Hey, James, Stevie, nice to meet you, man. Have a seat there. The sound that we've got here, it's very cozy. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's very welcome, good. welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Ah, this is great. Have you guys tried King's Mines before? Heard of King's Mines? I have. We have indeed. Yeah, yeah. I've tried been. a couple of bits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When did you visit? Uh, April last year, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, wonderful. What was the the highlight drum when you when you went? Oh, um, God, you, there's something else that's just been released, and now, oh, I've, like, it, now you was it Bell Rock by any chance by that yes. point? Yes. Yeah. yeah so we, got, we had the we, we've got the Bell Rock cast drink that just came out um, quite recently, but then even more recently is the Falkland, which I brought here with me today, and I've also brought uh, along Duke it, which is our flagship whiskey, which if you visited, you've definitely tried. Jake, um, just pop them up there. We released that this year. Um, and it basically, I, I mean, I don't know, did you guys ever try Dream to Dram, which was our very first expression? I did, yes. Yeah, so basically, yeah. it's the exact same makeup as Dream to Dram, but um, it's had double the amount of time to mature and cast. So it just takes everything that you'll, like, it takes every all the flavor notes that you usually find in that, but then adds in that extra layer of complexity and sort of like vanilla sweetness and cream uh, that just comes with age. And then the fault thing here, uh, we've just released this week, and it's made up of the same percentage. So just to reiterate, is 90% ex-bourbon first fills from Heaven Hill, Kentucky, and then 10% shaved toasted recharge cast, which uh, is Portuguese red wine. Um, and then the fault thing takes that, ups the STR to 20% instead of 10, and it really exaggerates all the fruit notes, the fresh fruits that you'll find in there, it brings in more like um, berry sweetness, and then it adds this also like fresh cream and like milk chocolate note. So I thought it'd be a really nice comparison. You're making me hungry, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole meal. Uh, yeah, amazing. It's a whole meal. Uh, Where yeah, should we start, James? I think start with Duke It, um, just because that's our, that's our flagship. Um, I, I brought fresh ones as well, so. Oh. Be, yeah, look at that, you know. Very kind. Treating man. you right. <laughs> Very kind indeed, right. There See what, Ian, do you want to? Well, Very sure, cool. James, Very you cool. Sort them out then. Go on. It. Yeah. So um, we got another glass up there. This is this is where we need more glasses. Yeah. Say. Everything that we bottle at Kings Barnes, it's natural color. Oops. It's non-chill filtered, and it's a minimum of forty-six percent. Um, so what we've got here, it's no different. Um, you guys want to just pour yourself out? You're out. very kind. Thank you. Around. James, tell me, I haven't had much Kings Barnes before. Are they new bottles? So, sorry. Are they new bottles? Um, no, no, no. These, no. Are the, these are the bottles that we've been using from the start. But yeah, like they're just they're they're absolutely wonderful. They're really nice. Uh, they're the, really cool. The, yeah. The ones that we have updated um, have been the the Weems malts. So that's our independent bottler. Yep. Um, that we that we also have. Um, they've recently gone through. Um, Can I get you a dram, Jack? Yes, please. Yes. Be ashamed to miss out. Would indeed. Thank you so much. So the Weems malts have gone for a bit of a rebrand, were you saying? Or? Yeah, so yeah. They've, got, they've got new bottles um, go, go, go. as well. And so they used to be in kind of like shorter, stumpier bottles, and now they're much, like, they're yeah. kind of like elongated, a bit more designed I think up. We're, Is that the 28 Bunner? Yeah, we're all massive, all massive fans of the Untold Riches that oh, came out. Yes, oh, yes, yeah, one of the best Bunner having expressions <laughs> I've ever fucking had in my life. <laughs> it's a bit of a cult classic. It's and so good. Go, people are like, do you have any more? We're like, oh, we wish. Yeah, no, I know, right? <laughs> I bought three bottles. 
bottles of that, and I think I'm now on that last half a bottle. Oh, yeah. serious, it's man. so fucking good, Are you good, popped man. them all, have you? It's amazing. Go on. You've opened them all. I've, o- I've drunk them yeah, all, yeah. man. They're fucking gone. I've, I've got one of the older single casts at home as well. I think it's uh, Antique Armchair. Oh, uh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, some amazing... You've, I mean, you guys have had some amazing old bunners over, yeah, yeah. Uh, over the years. Seriously cool stuff. Yeah, well, cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, well, thanks, 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 James. Nice one. So yeah, from this, I mean, um, if you guys done the tour, you, you already know what you're finding here, but you're getting those classic orchard fruits, you're getting like green apples, you're getting pears. It's really, really fruity, but it's very light and crisp. And then with the extra years of maturation on this from Dream to Dram, you're getting that sort of sweet vanilla uh, softness that comes in too. Mm. Sorry, what strength is this at? 46. 46, okay. Yeah. So, it's oh, quite, wow. a, um, quite full for a 46, right? Mm. Yeah, oh, is it 46? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we bought all everything at 46%, or the, I know it's going to be have some casting expression, yeah. but 46 is the minimum that we bought all that. Um, and that's, you know, that's also why there's no chill filtration, it's all natural color. We're trying to keep it as uh, as honest a product as, uh, as possible. I mean, yeah, there's a lovely, great. like, Kind of custard, sweet yeah, custard note. Like yeah, single, yeah. single cream and, and fruits. Definitely. Yeah, the nose is great. I think what, really what we're trying to create here is yeah, the nose a, is good. A classic Lowland style of spirit. It's you know we want to be known as, as the Lowland uh, single malt, and we think that you know um, especially with this, which we consider our distillery character in a bottle, is a, is a shining example of that. It's everything you could want from Lowland. Yeah. So you mentioned bourbon barrels from Heaven Hill. Yep. Do you source exclusively from Heaven Hill? Yep. And you work closely with them? Yep. So um, our production director, uh, Isabella, handles that relationship and she buys in all of our casks, um, selects them all for make sure that they're, you know, uh, the best quality that she can get her hands on. And uh, she recently actually did a trip to the, to the States um, just to sort of, you know, reaffirm that relationship and, and, and keep that sort of ongoing. For sure. Um, but yeah, so uh, we exclusively use um, uh, ex bourbon casks from Heaven Hill. Hill, for sure. Um, it's really interesting because everyone at home will know I really struggle when it comes to bourbon. Really just can't wrap my head around it. I've got a sweet tooth as well, James, so it doesn't really yeah. make any sense. <laughs> and Heaven Hill, particularly one of those whiskeys, oh, one of those bourbons, I should say, that I really just don't get along with. Mm. But bourbon and scotch have such a synergy together, right? And like you say, it's so important to have that closeness to make sure that the relationships are strong. Because these casks are of such a high quality and like you say cream yes custard creams biscuitiness just wonderful fruity notes it's light it's a bit malty it's just really clean what i would describe as a re exactly how you want to describe it right a really wonderful sweet clean lowland (laughs) single malt whiskey Uh, and i think that the casks that you're using will have a huge impact on what that is, right? Um, I love this. Sorry, yeah. I don't know what that was about. What was he saying? <laughs> I have no idea. I missed what he I was trying to say. <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> don't uh, forget, Jake. You... <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, yeah. delicious, right? Really, yeah, yeah, really yeah. Yummy. I was just going to say, Jake. Don't forget in the uh, in the episode leading up to this, you did say, uh, "Come and tap us on the shoulder if you want a dram." Well, for listen, us. but I don't know. If we're that more was than that. happy to give people drams. It's just yeah, when we're not in the middle of conversations, <laughs> we'll run around, we'll pour drams out. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When we're not filming, we we'll go fill your pockets. Worry. What do you guys think of this? You've tried it before, right? Uh, yeah, I think, again, it was probably relatively recently released at the time. I think there was still some dreams to dram around, so I compared those two right. at the time. Okay. Um, along with the, the Bell Rock, was just, they had some more, had some sherry in it, is that right? Yeah, yeah. so the Bell Rock that we've just launched. So we, we did uh, launch a Bell Rock um, in 2021. Uh, which is at 46%. And basically the makeup of that is 70% Oloroso sherry cast and 30% of the ex bourbon first fills. Um, and yeah, like the the 46% versus the cast strength one we've just launched this year, they're almost like two entirely separate whiskeys. They yeah. taste so wildly different. And uh, if you guys get some time, we've got that at the stand as well. So you should definitely come out and have a, have a little taste of it. Because um, that one, it's more like a, it's like creme brulee, toffee, um, you know, sort of maple syrup. It's really sticky. And as soon as you like, you know, as soon as you drink it, it just totally coats your mouth and sticks around for a long time. It's quite different from yeah. the usual the usual offerings that, that King's Bar. Yeah. Um, but the one that we've just launched this week, Falkland, it kind of it takes our um, our flagship style, but just really elevates all those fruit notes, brings out more berry sweetness, and adds that fresh cream and, and chocolate notes. So yeah. 
thought it was a good comparison to bring along so you could see them side by side. It's, it's, it's lovely, light, fruity, perfect kind of summery kind of going into Definitely. awesome, awesome yeah. it's You know, we're trying to make a really elegant style of spirit, really elegant dram. And I think, you know, you pick this up and straight away it's just so light, it's so crisp, it's so well balanced. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, it's too easy to drink is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and James, where are you at uh, price point on this? So um, on the bulk and the brand new one, it retails for 50 quid. Okay. Um, and then Duke is 46 quid. Okay. Yeah. Um, and with with Falkland, we've partnered exclusively uh, for UK retail with the uh, Luvian's Bottle Shop in Cooper and St Andrews. Okay. Um, so the only place that you can get Falkland in the UK is either directly from us, but we only have a small allocation for ourselves. The majority of it has gone to Luvian's, so you can get it on their online shop or in their uh, actual stores in St Andrews and Cooper. Nice. This is great to have in the cupboard just to go to when you don't want to sort of think about what you're drinking and just enjoy, you know, and have a few of them. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. This as would well. be, but like, if you, you know, I said, like in summer, it takes to picnic or something. Yeah. Like outside with a couple of mates. That's it. What I like about this, though, is kind of like the way we're describing it is kind of like very good for an entry level dram drinker, right? Yeah. I guess However, so, yeah. I wouldn't classify it as that. Not that it's not good for an entry level dram drinker, but there's just a good amount of character to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so for me, it's not like, oh, this is just for the entry level. Do you know what I mean? It's like, this has actually got a fucking good amount of depth, weirdly enough, yeah. you know? I, w I wasn't really expecting it, yeah. to be honest. I tried this once before, and it was at a festival, and I had had a skin full of whiskeys, so I don't really remember it, in all honesty. <laughs> it's actually sitting really nicely in the glass, right? This is the second whiskey of the day. Now that I've got a bit of time for it, and my palate is fresh, more importantly, I think it's really quite yummy. Yeah. Will we move on to the, sorry, what's it called? The Falkland. Falkland, yeah. sorry. So, um, you know, with everything that we release uh, from King's Barnes, um, the sort of naming conventions we like to keep everything local so a lot of you know what goes into making our whiskey is we want to give it a sense of place so we want to relate everything to lowlands and everything back to fife so we use local barley within six miles of the distillery obviously the water is taken right from beneath we distill and mature in fife and the same goes for the way that we name our products everything is named after either local landmarks or local villages okay so falkland is a neighboring village to uh, king's barns um, and it sort of pays homage to, to falkland palace um so actually Actually, King's Barns itself gets its name because uh, the uh, the sort of barns in the village used to store grain that uh, supplied Crail Castle and Falkland Palace. So that's the sort of time. Right, the cool. Story. And so we paid homage with that with our, with our brand new release. Yeah, if you haven't been and you're ever around St Andrews, A, it's not very hard to get to. B, it's a lovely part of the yes. world as well. Um, and C, it's a really nice tour. So sorry, James. The Falkland, you're saying, is Thanks, just mate. bumping up that STR cask in, uh, input by from 10% to 20%. Exactly right. And yeah. That's the only difference? Yep, that's the only difference. So they're, sorry, um, do you want to put yourself a drama yeah, well, so they're, they're even uh, the same age. So despite non-age statement um, on both of these drafts, they are seven years old liquid in there. Okay. Um, and that's the oldest whiskey that we've bottled uh, to date. Because, uh, you know, as you know, we're, we're a very new distillery. Yeah. But I think... Uh, you can sort of tell for yourself just from sampling, smelling, tasting these grabs. They hold a level of complexity beyond, you know, the, the years of the, the whiskey that's gone into it there. Definitely. Um, and that's, you know, that's no small part due to the, the quality casts that we use um, uh, at the distillery and that Isabella kind of sources yeah. for us. For, for the folks at home, when when did distillation start at the distillery? Yeah, so, um, so the distillery itself was established in uh, 2014 and we only filled our first cask in 2015. So so yeah, it's been, um, you know, it's, it's not been very long at all, which is funny because when I do tastings and stuff, I like be like, oh, I'll start with our history. It's like, can you can you call it history? Uh, like, it's very recent. Yeah, I guess it is in a way. But yeah, so we only filled our first gas in 2015, yeah. so definitely new place. So. And I mean, you're absolutely right. Sorry, just going back to what you said there, you know, the age statement is, is it matters here nor there when it tastes good, right? And I think that's what exactly what I was saying with the first one. It's got this character. It's, 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 uh, it's a mouthful. It's definitely whiskey and it tastes yummy. Um, what's your plans moving forward? Is age statement something that you're working towards? Like you say, this is now your eighth year. Is it like we're working towards just getting a 10 year old out and then that's what we want? Or is this kind of the focus? 
you yeah. know, the way you're going about things at the minute where you're not focusing on age, but focusing on quality and looking to tie in local landmarks, local stories into your whiskey making process. So for the meantime, the reason why we're not, kind of not putting an age on it is because sometimes we feel like that acts as a barrier for some people. Mm -hmm. You know, if we put seven years on the bottle, we almost feel like we would get more people discounting it just at face value. They'd be like, uh, never mind, you know, and they don't give it the time of day. Whereas we think, you know, not having that on there opens it up a bit more for people to try it. Um, and then when they taste it, then, you know, you know, I've heard people say like, oh, that tastes like a 10 year old whiskey, that tastes like a 12 year old whiskey or whatever. Um, and not, and again, like as we've kind of just already said, it's not that age matters, but for some people it just does act as that barrier. I think that's the thing. People are used to buying based on age statements. That's how scotch generally works, right? It has done for a long time. And you're right. People get stuck in their ways. Oh, well, it's not 10. I'm not fucking buying it, right? Yeah. I think Stupid. It's, it, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Like Stevie and I, we had this conversation before we signed. Like we, we were out last night. We had a few drams at the uh, Princess Street. Um, some of them had some reasonably big numbers on them, but others did not. And I think when you get above a certain price point, like even I, like knowing everything you just said, Jake, still kind of look at something and like, you want 200, 300, 400 pounds for this without an age statement? What are you, what planet are you on? Like that becomes a harder sell, I for think, sure. than something in the kind of 50, 60 pound yeah. price limit, especially because it's increasingly hard to find quality at that point. And I would far rather have something that tastes good than something that's got the biggest number yeah. you can find for that price point. Yeah, no, um, I agree, I agree, definitely. You know, and even at those much higher price points, I think it's still, you still kind of need to get yourself in a bit of mindset of like, okay, fine, let me try and taste this first before passing judgment yeah. on it. Like someone's made it and made it for a reason. Like people are hopefully not pushing out pish at like any, any level. Um, and these are great. Like people should not be, you know, why the ist you want to put against <laughs> it about age statements? Yeah, ageist. just pigeonholing things, ageist. really, right? That's yeah, it. it is ageist. Yeah. yeah, well done. It's just sort of ingrained, you know. Um, you've just been we've been fed for so long that age equals quality yeah. and equals taste. Um, and you know, th there's a little bit. I think it's still in most people that when you know when you go to a tasting, you look at the oldest whiskey in the lineup, and you just think, um, like, oh yeah, that's gonna be amazing. Like if it's got a high age statement, and, like you still like you sort of subconsciously think that. Um, but yeah, it's just it's not always true. You know, you can try something that's like. I mean, I definitely have. I've tried stuff that's like four years old and. It really, it didn't even hold a candle to things that are kind of, you know, ten years older below. Like, yeah. it's just, it's all down to, you know, the flavor profile, and that's at the end what matters. And you know, the quality spirit that's produced and the quality casks used, that matters far more than any age statement you can put on a bottle. Um, but in terms of our plans, yes, at some point we will, because at the end of the day, um, that still does act as a barrier, even not having an age statement. People will, you know, uh, they won't pick it up. Um, just simply because there is, there is no age statement on it and you know it is going to help kind of open us up in different markets and things like that and bring us to a wider audience so yes it is in the plans uh, we will eventually do it um, but yeah for the meantime we're, we're holding strong with, with no age statement and letting the whiskey speak for itself hey let it sing let it sing why not <laughs> yeah and sorry just going back a little bit the SDR, you said, is Portuguese wine. Yes. So the SDR casks that we've got under management are largely French wine. Right. So I'm interested. Do you know what sort of wine it is? I'm not 100% sure on the type of wine, um, to be because honest. Because straight away, for me on this one, I don't know about you, gents, you can taste the lift up in tannins, right? Yep. It's yes. very, very apparent in the glass. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think it does like it does retain, um, you know, a, a little bit of the tannins. We do obviously because it's an SDR and shape those recharge. It is trying it does strip back that most intense layer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I still pick tannins, it up a but, good bit though. Yeah, I mean, especially like on the fog where it's, it's toned up a little bit, um, you know, in, in terms of the SDR influence, because yeah. I think on on Duke, it, it acts more of like a it's more of a tool as opposed to like you know, oh yeah, there's the red wine, I can taste it in there. For sure, I think it adds a level of character to yes. the first one, like we were saying, but yeah. it, you wouldn't necessarily pinpoint it as tannins or anything yeah. like that. It just yeah. has a backbone to it. Exactly. Whereas now, and probably now because you've told me, something. it's 10% more and I'm going, oh, it's SDR. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hunting for that. Right? <laughs> but that's what I'm getting in this one, a good bit more tannin. And again, like, not that that's a bad thing, it, it adds, it's a different brand. Yeah. You know, the fact that this is the same age liquid, 
same sort of stuff but it's just that slight bit more of the str is really interesting for me the fruit so, profile's changed a bit like it's gone from being kind of the green like orchard fruit kind of apples pears maybe even a little bit of kind of gooseberry or something to kind of slightly more towards peach apricot so it's kind of become like still quite light fruit yes uh, yes just that so much like emergence. under yeah, yeah, yeah. ripe raspberries and strawberries that just for, you know it's not that really ripe sweet berry it's just before it yeah. turns you know um very yummy definitely it so is what's delicious. your guys favorite out of these two then Falkland and Duke oh that's a tough one <laughs> it's kind of six to one for me I, they're for two different reasons right, right. I, I would have them at two different times mm -hmm. I think this is one that you have to have in the cupboard I would agree with what you said on that Stevie this one's a little bit different maybe a little bit more specialist i can imagine pairing foods with this yes all right just because it has that much like it really will stand up a little bit and still 46 percent like these don't taste like 46 percent whiskeys there's a good amount of character to them i like yeah. it um i would say the first one for everyday drinking second one for a slightly more special event personally which didn't answer your question at all but <laughs> yeah, there you that's go. Good. Yeah, yeah guys what do you think it's just a bar i don't buy well, question. we do that as well, but let's answer James' <laughs> question first. Which one do you prefer? What do I prefer? Well, you, Jake, it's quite tough, actually, because right. they're both yummy for different reasons. But yeah, I'm going to have to... Sorry, it's boring, but I'm going to have to agree with you. Like, <laughs> you know, I think that is a good daily sipper, whereas this one is delicious, but I would kind of get a little bit... Um, I just think kind of like a little bit... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not tired of keep going back to it but right, you know right, right. i think one or two would be enough for me yep. and then come back to it another day for sure whereas uh, the other one but if i had to pick if you had to pin me down uh, i probably go would go for the second one the uh, yeah. portuguese yeah. cast yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so i'm uh, the falkland for me i think um on the basis that this kind of fruit profile is a little bit less common right so it's something that especially at this price point i think it's quite hard to find it's not you know i can't think of many other drams where you know you'd be like oh it's not kind of nice orangey kind of fruit is coming through in that in that way like peaches apricots etc yeah um yeah so i think just yeah this this one just on the, the basis that stands out just stands a, little out a little bit more brilliant yeah, but Fair play. All right. Well, James, what we're going to do now is we're going to do buy or don't buy. Okay. We also have Oosh or Bin It if we really don't like it. Okay. <laughs> or I do like right. it. <laughs> I think you'll be all right here. Stevie, <laughs> why don't we start with you? Uh, let's start with the Ducat. Uh, 50 quid. Did you say? Uh, 40, 46. 46. 46 pounds. <laughs> now, given that there are some bottles on the supermarket shelves that are around that price. Like what? Oh, I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> Go on, name some names. <laughs> Go on, buy, don't buy, what do we think? Uh, oh, it's a buy. It's a buy, yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, I think it would be a great buy as a gift as well. I say this sometimes. Like, it's a really cool little something different, um, something, you know, that people, maybe they're not into their whiskey, they're getting into it. It's a really good starting point. But as you say, it's got depth there for like a seasoned uh, whiskey drinker as well. So, dip, dip, dip. Um, okay. And then on the, sorry, what's the second one called? The Falklands. Oh, price point? Yeah. 50, 50 Falklands. That's 50 quid. Yeah, that's a buy to similar sort of reasons. Um, yeah, buy, buy, buy all round for me. Cool. Love to hear yeah. it. Ian. Um, Lowland whiskey is often not my thing. Like the grassy kind of hay style notes really don't do it for me okay. and there are certain distilleries that have been around for a long time in the region that are very much not my thing and i've spoken with a couple of guys in team four i love what you guys are doing um ducat is definitely a buy for me 46 pounds really good quality liquid you're laughing lovely summer dram i think it would work well in a bunch of cocktails as well and Falkland, obviously, first time we've been trying it. But again, buy and probably even a stronger buy than, than, than Zucop. Great. Fair play. Brilliant. Yeah, I'd agree. Listen, strong buys on both. Uh, I'd agree with what you said. It's a great gifting whiskey. I'd say for either of them, particularly the first one, probably, yep. because it hits every marker, whether you are entirely new or you are a little bit more seasoned. But both really good whiskeys. 46 pounds and 50 pounds, yeah? yeah. 
it's a fucking joke. I kind of want to come in and see how you're doing this now. Uh, you know, really, really good quality whiskey, good quality casks. It's very evident in the liquid. Strong buys, both of them for me. Uh, yeah, no question, no question at all. And James, obviously, you work with the brand. You're buying both of these whiskeys, or? I mean, I'd have to, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite, James, out of the two? That's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, personally, for me, I think I think the Falkland takes it. Um, yeah. I mean. I, I love to do it for, for what it is. I think, you know, it, it is our distillery character in a bottle. And I think, you know, you guys have already said it. It works so well as an introduction dram, but also, you know, it has that complexity that a seasoned drinker can sort of sit down and pick apart and really enjoy. But I think the Falkland just takes all of that and elevates it to that next level for me. Um, I wish it wasn't limited because I would buy far much more of it. And, uh, and you know, I've got, to, I've got to get a bit of a stockpile going. How many <laughs> bottles? How many bottles? To be so done? Um, I think it's around 3,600 off the top. My head. Not right. that many, not that many. Not a lot. Obviously worldwide. That's worldwide. Um, okay. And yeah, and the the vast majority of our UK allocation is available just through Nubians. So if you're trying to if you're trying to pick it up, uh, go to them. Go to Nubians. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Well, James Disson, thank you so much for coming along and, and sharing these me. two whiskies. Didn't need to bring fresh bottles, but <laughs> we love popping a new one. So thank you very much. Um, always nice to see you, man. Right. Cheers. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll Many see you soon. Appreciate Cheers, it, James. James. Thank you. Uh, ben, back in the Whiskey Diary, is a big fan really? of King's Barns, I think. I yeah. think he uh, he rates them a lot, loves the brand. Um, cheers. Cheers, James. Take care, man. Oh, being treated. Get in. I love it, mate. Get it in. I need some water. Um, Actually, no, really impressed. I don't think I've had King Barnes before, you know. I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get them on, man, because I think, like, I've, I've said it on my account, A lot of people like, probably, maybe not dismiss them, but maybe not always. Uh, you know, what, one of, if not my favorite, Lowland distilleries, and genuinely doing, I think, a much better job than a bunch of the established Lowland distilleries. Yep. You know, there have been people out there that have been distilling for hundreds of years. Yep. Yeah, no, they're doing some interesting stuff. Yeah. Making a name for themselves the right way. Uh, I would compare them a little bit to Daft Mill. Yeah. Now, for different reasons. I've always sung the praises of Daft Mill because unlike a lot of new distilleries nowadays, they waited until their whiskey was 12 for a release, yeah, yeah. right? Well, and it's farm to bottle as well, right? Like, but, So this is the thing. There's a lot, but sorry, the what did main you say thing for me... Farm to bottle. Francis, the owner, he literally farms his own fucking barley. He used to grow barley for Macallan, right. and then he went, shit, I'm losing out here. Right. I'm going to make my own whiskey. Okay. And Why he wouldn't built, you? He built his own They've distillery on his own. Proper. Daft Mill is one of the very few new brands, and it's kind of just on the brink of, I would say, being a new brand now, because it's been around for a good amount of time. But they did it right, right? Now, obviously, Kings Barn, they're, they're, they're releasing younger whiskies, but it works. And that is something that we, you know, I know we talked about this time and time again, both on and off camera. There are so many new distilleries out there now. It's just fucking get it in the bottle. Whiskey's booming. It's three, three in a day. Get it out. Fuck off, man. Yeah. Wait until it tastes good. And these sorts of whiskeys we've just tried there, that's a good example to me of a distillery doing it right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I was impressed. Um, I was impressed. I must say. Yeah. Well, yep, lads, yep. we are an hour in. Already. So everyone at home, this is going to be... I knew we were going to do this in an hour. Everyone at home, this is going to be a longer than usual episode. It's going to be a very long episode. Uh, Stay tuned if you can. You know. Pour yourself another dram. Yeah. Settle in. Ian, who are you going to run off and grab next? Well, to be honest, like, it took me a little a hot minute last time because it was A, it's so busy here. It is getting busier uh, and busier. And by B, the like, I'm trying to be a bit respectful of people and like go for whoever's looking like the least busy at one time. <laughs> Everywhere's busy. Maybe we should get the Tiger King here to run out and grab somebody. <laughs> go uh, corral somebody, my guy. Tiger King. <laughs> Carol Baskin. <laughs> right. Who's left? Who am I going to get? So you got, know, man. Grab Wood, we, you we've got uh, no Woodies. We've got uh, Cadenhead. Tell you what, why don't you grab Duncan Taylor? You Duncan were excited Duncan about Taylor. that. Yeah, let's go grab They've them. They've got a Brackler there from the Octaves I want to try. And Black Bull They've well, got the Black Bull, but then you said that they maybe have a couple of special things. So see if you can... All right, all right, boys. You know, right, maneuver. Grab Are you going to be all right without me? I think we might handle it, okay. Famous last yeah. words from me we there. We will keep right. the ball rolling as Stevie jumps up and runs off to grab the guys from Duncan Taylor. It was a long old day, guys, and unfortunately, this is the only interval where the whiskey crack dried up.
although momentarily. Uh, I just wanted to jump in here to this slightly quieter segment of the podcast. First and foremost, to say thank you all for joining us again. The Edinburgh Whiskey Festival was an incredible day. Definitely new for us, trying to pull in all these different brands and make sure that we could showcase not only the event, but some of the incredible wares that we're there to try. Uh, this episode, I believe we tried five different or whiskeys from five different brands. So seriously full on for our first episode. We did manage to film a second episode at the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival. So that's something that you can keep your eyes open for in the coming weeks. Um, but thank you so much, everyone who managed to get down to the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival. I'm sure you'll agree it was a phenomenal day. Just a quick reminder that Graham and Serena hosted this incredible event to raise money for a phenomenal charity, My Name's Doddy. They raised a huge amount of money there on the day, but there is a link in the description if you can afford to uh, you know, donate any little bit more. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, and this is the thing, you know, days like this, it makes it all the more worthwhile when you know that not only have you been able to try some great whiskeys, enjoy yourself, but the money that has been earned is actually going to a really good cause. So we were delighted to be invited to come along, join in. Uh, and whilst we didn't get to speak to loads of you, we did manage to bump into a few of you. A uh, big shout out to Paul, who came over and gave me a miniature bottle of Glenfiddich 12. Loved that crack, great stuff. Just goes to show that uh, our little podcast is obviously making a bit of a name for itself, which we very much like to see. Um, uh, equally, guys, you know, look, if you've got any comments or any ideas as to what you'd like to see from us moving forward, let us know. Remember to like, remember to comment, remember to subscribe for future episodes. And I will uh, let you get back to the episode now as Gabby from Duncan Taylor is coming over with some seriously good whiskeys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It got you in the front of me. Oh, it'll hold it, it'll hold it. Nice one. Sorry, you need them. Three delicious drams. Up on the, uh, yep. before our makeshift table collapses, <laughs> it is just a cardboard box. <laughs> this is some of the finest oak you'll ever see. <laughs> I proper, um, I tried to MacGyver it and I, I stole that cask end there to try and make it all a bit more stable, but then someone nicked it back. Right. How are we doing there, Steve? Are we, are we setting Gabby up with the, with the mic, are we? Cool. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two! Is that all good? Gabby, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Uncut and Unfiltered podcast. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Edinburgh Whiskey Festival today. And you are representing Duncan Taylor, yes? Fantastic. Now, you've bought very kindly with you three drams to share with us. Would you like to tell us about one of them? Would you like to just start pouring? Where would you like to start? How would you? I think we should start pouring. And I'll okay. Just keep talking because. Uh, Where would you like to start? With the Black Bull. With the Black Bull. I will pour. You tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So Duncan Taylor, we have we own Black Bull Brands, and Black Bull is actually older than Duncan Taylor. So okay. it's from 1864, and it's uh, originated in Dundee. Um, and it was uh, a wine merchant, a shop owner that uh, was started with the Blackpool brands. Um, because basically, back in the day, wine merchants, they were like independent bottlers of the time. Because they used to buy casks from the distilleries and then they would just bottle it in the shop. So uh, George Wilshire, the founder of uh, Blackpool, he established his own brand because he was also a farmer. So he had lots of cattle. And he would enter the cattle into competitions. And uh, at one point, he won the prize for the biggest bull in Scotland. So, and the bull was called Pride of the North. Uh, and since he was one of the first independent or wine merchants that had, thank you, that had uh, paper labels on the bottle, because before that they were, bottles were handmade, hand blown or mouth blown. Um, and they, the labels wouldn't stick, but he started getting, purchasing bottles from factories and then was able to apply labels. So on the label, back in the day, there was a black bull on it, and then it was called Pride of the North. But the problem that he didn't take into consideration was that people couldn't read. Back in the right. Day. Okay. <laughs> so they would come into the shop and then they would point at the bottle and say the one with the black bull in it, which is why now it's renamed. I love the black that. <laughs> I love it. Right. But so it's a blended whiskey from us, um, and it's a premium blender whiskey because it has a high malt content. So it's about 50% malt, 50% grain, and it's a blend between sherry and ex bourbon casks. So it's lovely. Ooh. Really brand easy to drink. Born from an illiterate society. What more could you ask for at a <laughs> festival? We're all going to be illiterate by the end of the day. 
Lovely. I, I'm literate at the start of the day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So everything is cast, uh, everything's natural color, nothing's added, nothing's taken away, unchill okay. filtered. Uh, and it's 50%. Uh, 50% is just going to be my question, yeah. ABV. So we call it the 350s 50% malt, 50% grain, 50% ABV. Because yeah. it still gives it a nice kick, I think. Uh, but it doesn't, uh, the alcohol doesn't overpower the flavor. Okay. It's still really easy to drink. Yeah. And I always say this to customers that it's really easy to drink. You can't really feel the alcohol. And then I think, is it me who has a problem at this point? <laughs> or is it really that nice? <laughs> We've all got a problem. It's too good. Yeah, no, fair enough. I have to say, at 50%, it sits very nicely, yeah. right? It's, uh, it's, um, it's sweet. It's yummy. Are we allowed to know what the breakdown of the components are? You say 50% malt, 50% grain. Can you tell us one of the distilleries, a few of the distilleries, or is it all a secret recipe? It's a Black Bull recipe. Okay, secret recipe. <laughs> say no more. Say no more. Like Colonel Sanders with his Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, I think I tried, I don't think I tried the 12 word. I think you've got a, was it a 20? What, what was the blend that I tried at the uh, whiskey show? Mm -hmm. It was a much older age statement in the 12, was it not? So uh, the current range has the two Kylos, uh, and without any age statements, Kylo and Kylo Peters. Right. Uh, and then we've got the 12 year olds. We have 18 year olds. We have a 30 year old, 50 year old, and a 55 year old. 30 year old, yeah. yeah. Tried the 30 year old? Yep. Wow. Fair play. Oh, it, it was, was really good. At the whiskey show, we had a Port Ellen. Mm. Yeah, all right, mate. All right. <laughs> I'm enjoying my Black Bull 12 year old. Oh, I'm, new. <laughs> I'm enjoying this too. Do you know what I mean? Port Ellen. What are you talking about Port Ellen for? G Gabby and Scott have bought out the big guns. Of the yeah. Well, well, we released the Port Ellen two weeks ago, so it's good that we're talking about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, listen, whatever, whatever. I'm enjoying this. I think this is very, very cool. Yeah. It's really easy to drink, and I think blended whiskey has this misconception around it because it is good whiskey. Uh, of course, there's brands that's, you know, not up to the standard, but I think blended whiskey is coming around again because it was a big deal back in, in the 90s, in the 1900s. Um, yeah, and now there's more companies bringing it out again and making yeah. quality stuff. Um, this has got a kind of delightfully old school mm. vibe to it, right? Do you know what I mean? Like like an old school grain old school, vibe? Old school blend vibe to okay. it. Okay. Well, like Black like Rod. Old school grain vibe in it. But go on, you continue. Yeah. Well, Which like is... Black Rod. <laughs> or... You're never going to live that down. <laughs> Just Gabby doesn't get this, and I will maybe explain later. It's okay, I'll oh, smile anyway. Yeah, later, later. I bought a very poor <laughs> old blend on auction a while ago. But anyway, thanks, Stevie. It's okay, mate. That's what I'm here for. That's what friends are for, to exactly. remind you of your mis yeah, mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Just going to sit there and... <laughs> um, <clears throat> Grain has that old school vibe, and I definitely get what you were going for, but getting a kind of lightly peated vibe to it and the way it kind of comes across kind of with the maltiness is, you know, in that way that you might have a kind of whiskey from the 60s or the 70s when you had kind of floor malting and most things were kind of lightly peated, right? The way that kind of comes across throughout it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the elements have been taken care of, right? Handled carefully. I think that's the different, that's the differentiator between old school and new school. Is there was maybe a bit of a slower pace to things? Yeah, but I mean, also in, in the sense that um, when you're piecing stuff today, if you're piecing a single malt, no one's piecing to like three or four ppm, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. I know what you mean. There is that sort of very touch of, touch of waft. Yeah. No, fair play. I like it. Where are we at price point on this, Gabby? So, uh, yeah, you need to speak to my colleague. Okay. <laughs> the UK is cool, actually cool, not cool, one cool. of my markets. All right, never mind. That's Shall I have a quick look on uh, figure it out. We Google? Figure it out. Cool. All right, so Black Bull is your bl is it, it's always blended scotch. Yeah. It's always got malt and grain in yeah, it, yeah, no matter what age statement. And we tried to stick to the original recipe of, uh, like I said, doing the 50-50, uh, okay. because that's yeah. how George Bullshaw did it back in the day. Very cool. And then... Just a specialist whiskey shop, so you're never going to find this. At, like you're never going to find it at a supermarket or anything. It's mostly retailers and whiskey shops. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Woodwinters have it, and so we also sell it online. And there's lots of other retailers around the country that sell it in the shops. I think you're looking have, about you have your own online shop as well. Yeah. So we've got the uh, the Spirits Embassy. Our, our oh, Spirits Embassy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think you're looking at around 
uh, depends where you buy it. The Spirits Embassy actually have it for £37.50. Wow. By the way. Uh, Master of Malt, £46.90. So, you know, look, kind in between there. Less than 40 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was, yeah, but kind of tasting this, I was going to assume it could be, yeah, close to 50. Yummy. All right. I like it. It is a 12 year old whiskey as well. Yes. Yeah. And this is the thing, right? You've got it at least 12 years old. I'm sure there's stuff in there that's yeah, a good bit older. older stuff in there. <laughs> but, uh, and this is a rebrand as well, or like fairly new rebranding on this? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you remember the black bottles, the legendary black bottles, the matted ones. Yes. Uh, that had a really aggressive looking bowl on the label. Yes. yes. Yeah. So we rebranded. Um, now, I joined the company two months ago, so I'm not exactly sure on the date when it happened, but I think it was at the beginning of this year that the new right. branding came out. So now the entire range looks like this. The Kylos, the two Kylos, they look a little bit different, but there's still similar elements to it. Cool. Very cool, very cool. And then, of course, our 50-year-old and 55-year-olds, they come in this exclusive luxury case. I'm sure, what yeah. What money are they selling for out of interest? A little bit more? A little bit more. <laughs> are they, like... Thousands or tens of thousands? Thousands. Okay. Yeah. Let's have a look. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, there's any... I, I remember seeing one of them come, come out, and I think, you know, it was it was expensive enough you got to have a game of golf with Nick Faldo or something. <laughs> Five bags. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, um, 55 is eight. Huh? The 55-year-old is eight. The 55 year old is an interesting one because it's actually, so it's still a blended whiskey, but it came from one distillery, Loxite. Oh, oh wow. So it's only exclusively Loxite whiskey in that one. Cool. I want to try that now. Well, I mean, also, yeah, I mean, a closed distillery mm -hmm. that you do not see very often. Yeah. Why don't you guys split a bottle? It's a good idea. Yeah. You know, it's only four grand each. Yeah, it's only four grand each. <laughs> let, me speak, let me speak to my bank manager. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Um, sorry, Gabby. Brackla next? Or, yeah, Brackla. Yeah. I think you know. Now, this, this is one. one that you wanted to, uh, had your eye on, Jake. Well, we tried the Brackla, the 14 year old Brackla, which is the festival bottle to yep. begin with, obviously, guys. That was uh, Muscat and um, Fino Sherry. Mm -hmm. This is. This is a bit special, and it's actually. Um, I'll let Gabby tell you. Go on, tell us why it's so special. Duncan Taylor is famous for the octave range. Our current owner, Ewan Shant, he came up with this concept of having an octave, which is basically one eighth size of a sherry bus. So what we do is, what we get, we get the sherry bus, and then we deconstruct them and build into smaller casks, octaves, which are between 80 to 90 liters. Um, and then we do a second day maturation for a few months in an octave cask, which adds the color, the, the flavors of darker berries, darker fruit, dried fruits, and just, yeah, more depth to the whiskey. Okay. And this one's excellent because for me, on the nose and on the palate, it's just salted caramel and butterscotch and toffee. Ooh. It's like a dessert yeah. in a glass. Uh, and are they always sherry octaves or do you yeah. occasionally use, okay, so there's no always sherry octaves. wine octaves. Okay. And out of interest, who makes your octaves? Yeah, we have I a... fucking hate Octaves when it comes to maturation. They're a, they're a bitch to work with, man. Getting them made properly so that they don't leak. Right. Not easy. No, right? not easy. Perkins, Octaves, whatever you want to call them, mm. they are notorious for leaking. And we've put some really good liquid into Octaves before and it's gone. <laughs> so who makes your Octaves? We use a bodega in Spain, but we actually, uh, Duncan Taylor, it's one of the few, actually maybe the only one independent bottler that has, uh, that have their own Cooper on sure. site. Right. That's the guy standing over there at the stand, tell him. Cool. So he takes care of the casks to see if they're leaking or not, and he obviously fixes the casks and uh, so they prevent further leakage. Fantastic. And are we allowed to know what bodega or what type of sherry or? It's Olorosa sherry. Olorosa sherry, but you're not telling us the bodega? Oh. <laughs> Jay was like, Pick up, stop the podcast now, pick up the phone. <laughs> They are good <laughs> And so in the office, every Wednesday, um, we get together with the team and then we sample some uh, octaves, maturing octaves, to see where they are in the stage. Because we don't set a number of months that it needs to mature in an octave. We, we have to taste it. So it's somewhere between 3 and 12 months, okay. depending on the pro flavor profile. And we never rush whiskey, because you cannot rush whiskey. Which is why Wednesdays, we taste the samples. We, well, we deem whether it's worthy of bottling now, or should it stay in an octave for a bit longer, or should we do something else with it? And then cool. I'll look forward to being Fun invited Wednesday. to your office on a Wednesday then. That sounds good. Gabby, no to visit now. have you tasted the festival bottling today? Which one? Have you tasted the festival bottling today? No, not yet. The brown, we well, the stands. Oh. This would be a really cool... Try it. This is the festival bottling. 
So, 14 year old Brackler, Muscat, and uh, Fino finish, which is why I wanted to try this one. Brackler is all over today. There was also one in uh, Woodrow's, wasn't Woodrow, it? Yeah, we've got another one to so try. We've got another one coming later. It's the day of, it's whiskey for kings, my guy. <laughs> it's great though, you have the like queens, it's, sorry. There's not, <laughs> not been a huge amount of it about. Right, and now it seems like this is this it's is not great. easy to get your hands on anymore, my guy. At a good price as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's Optimal true. Prices, it's fucking difficult. Very difficult. I yeah. love your butterscotch note on this. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Butterscotch. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of salted caramel. So I may not have heard uh, where we are strength-wise with this. Fifty-three-two. Okay. And these are uh, always are these cast strength. Yeah, we always do cast strength bottlings uh, for our single cask series and also octaves and then rare old grain. And everything's natural, so no colors added, unchill filtered, yeah, the way it should be. Yeah. I love it. I the really... dryness of that Oloroso. Again, similar to the first one. Raisins. Raisins, but super dry, super tart, and astringent. I love that. But it's it's got that amazing kind of sweetness at the front before that dryness yes. kind of like... Oh. Yes. 100%. Punches its way through the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Maraschino um, sherries and... And um, it's got heaps of stuff, yeah. And then on the finish, I'm getting a bunch of kind of like cigar box as well. Um, it's, it's, it's old school sherry. Sorry, Gavin, you don't That's need to. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Pour yourself a dram if you would like. That's what I was saying. You don't need to hold it. <laughs> I was going to sneak it, sneak away with that. <laughs> yeah, I run off with it. Why not? Yeah, but so this is exactly what we normally look for in octaves, uh, the kind of similar flavor profile. Obviously, the whiskey is different because different distilleries produce different characteristics. But um, as a finish, as a second maturation, this is what exactly what we're looking for. The raisins, darker fruits, darker berries. But why do you, so I suppose maybe I'm, you've answered the question I'm just about to ask. I was going to say, why do you always use Oloroso? Is it because that's the style of fruit it's that you style. guys really... Yeah, exactly. Why not PX? Why not Fino? Why not something else? I think it's just something that we started with and it worked really well with the uh, with the Octave. So we decided to continue with that. And Octaves are also quite well known now around the world in different countries and people know the quality. So they always, they trust that we're going to bottle something that's good. Okay. Yeah, so fair enough. So from a brand recognition point of view, you know that it's always going to have that dry fruit, that depth to it. Fair enough. I have to say, look, like uh, we've used Octave Octaves before we've used Oloroso octaves, and we've had great results. We've also had a lot of liquid loss, you know. Uh, so there's that balance. PX, interesting. Uh, we've had some. We've had some other sort of sherry as well, which I can't actually think of. What did you pop on. Dan's in? Go on. Did you put Dan's in Oloroso octaves? It was, yeah. Yeah. Four of them or something like that. Six, Six of them. Months, eight months. Yeah, because you you're eight months, aren't you, Gabby? Everything's eight months. Oh, okay. Three to twelve. Sorry, I can't hit. Yeah, okay. Twelve months. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And, sorry, how long was this? Was this one? That was nine months. This is nine. Nine months. months. Okay. okay. Which is a lot of time. It is a long time. In Oloroso octave. Let's be honest. These are small casks. Are they always first, second fill? Is yeah. there a? It's either first or second fill. And what do you do once you've used them twice? Just dispose of them. Get rid of them. Either rebuild them, rechar them, and then if we can't use them anymore, then. Okay, okay. Wow. So there's no limit of reuse. Okay, cool. What do we think, gents? This is great. This is really easy drinking for all the sweet and delicious reasons. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Like you, I was getting that punch of sweetness and then that dryness just seeps in and continues and I love that I do love that because I I was worried it's just going to be sweet 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 right you know this, um, but yeah th this for me is the kind of rare whiskey that you could like pour into your glass like whilst you're watching TV a film or something and just like have a great evening <laughs> and you don't have to think about it too much if you don't want to but if you want to think about it there is a lot there's a lot to find. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, it's only been in my glass for a few minutes now, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, leave this to breathe, and it will start to develop into a wonderful sort of, you know, it'll open up. Well, that is a freshly singing. cracked bottle as well, so. Sorry? That is a freshly cracked bottle as well, so, you know. This is it, for sure. We're yeah. drinking net pours on both of these at the minute, you know. Yeah. Uh, I do think that there's a lot of breathing room within this to really open up and start. 
start telling a story. I love it. Bracklough for me is always a winner, Gabby. So thank you so much for bringing this one. Really, really cool. And you can still taste the distillery character Bracklough, which is a different kind of version. No, but, I, but it's still there. It's very much a Bracklough, right? Very, very pleasant. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Now, the last one, stay calm, Ian. It's a butter. It's okay. Is this Moynia oh. or is this just peanut? Stoisha. Stoisha. Okay. Ooh. Cool. Oh, cool. So it's from our single cask series. We have a few ranges at Lincoln Taylor, but the main ones would be Blackpool, Octave, single cask, and then we also have some rum, gin, and the rare old grain. Okay. So Stoisha, eight year old, single cask, cask strength, yep. all the rest of it. Stevie, what are we at? Oh, it's 54.2%. 54 too. And I just forgot to point it out, it's a sherry cask. I, I was just about to ask, thank you so much, Gabby. Uh, sherry butt? It's a sherry, uh, I think it's um, actually a barrel. Um, doesn't say. Um, how many bottles? Yeah, how many bottles? 414. Yeah, it's a butt. A butt, yeah, that's sleeped a good bit for an eight year old butt. Please. Was it a butt, was it? We just say, it says oak cask, it doesn't say butt or anything. So either a very full hogshead or a slightly leaky butt. Yeah. 54 Who doesn't so. like a leaky butt? That's oh. true, actually. <laughs> because uh, what did we get out of our tour more? You know, that was about that 400 and. Yeah, 486, I think. Yeah, and that was a 33 year old butt. So. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you have lost a little bit, but still. Ooh. Straight away on the nose there. It's just that like kind so of dirty Isle of Pete, you know? Say it again, so okay. Immediately you get these medicinal notes. Yeah. And when was this bottled, Gabby? What, well, sorry? When, it when was, was it bottled? Actually, Is it a new release or... Does it say... Yeah, 23. Yeah. June. June. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this year. It's Earlier new. this year, June 23, 54 2. Yeah. Ooh. Cask strength, single cask. Stoisha, eight year old. Take the stage in. Tell us what are your first thoughts. It's really interesting. I mean, if you were to tell me that this was an Ardberg or even an Ardberg. Even someone's <laughs> going to pull me up on that immediately, um, or a, or a lager. Like I could potentially get that from it. It's got a kind of meaty tariness mm -hmm. to it on the palate. Yeah. It's definitely stoicher. It's not moinia. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, once you taste it, mate, I'm pretty sure it is. It's quite medicinal, but still lots of barbecue bonfire on the palate. Definitely the bonfire. barbecue. Oh wow! Strong. That is a big bonfire, isn't it? Fuck. There we go. That's delicious. That's something that's <laughs> the first thing today that's really fucking... Delicious. Yeah. This, give is, a, this is a bit of an oosh contender. Yeah, yeah, it's like getting it. there. I think if uh, if SMWS were here and, and, and naming this, it would be something like bonfire in a quick... Uh, sorry, barbecue in a quick fit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, barbecue in a what? Quick fit. Fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, it is that bonfire-esque though. It's, it's 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 not barbecue to me. It's bonfire. It's slightly yeah. damp wood bonfire. Yeah, yeah. The, yes. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. camping. It's 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 big. It's punchy. It's camping. Camping. Yeah. Camping in a glass. <laughs> yes. I hated camping, but I love the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. camping. I hate camping, but I love the whiskey. I mean, the, yeah. This, I this, this, nice, I this, this would be the camping I hate. As I don't like camping either. But like, this is bad camping. <laughs> For me, camping is a one-star hotel with a bathroom <laughs> that you don't have to share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is me going, fuck it, let's find a hotel and drink this instead. <laughs> so good. It's good. It also has this long finish. Uh, it, it is, right? Amazing. It does keep going and it's warming and it's... This is a Christmas jam. Yes, jam, right? exactly that. It's a warmer. Yes. You got in after a long, cold walk, fucking rain trashing you on the beach. Get in, dry off the dogs, pour this in your glass, sit down by a peaty fire. <laughs> Woo! Mate, I'm on Isla right now. I'm sitting in uh, that in cottage Ra in Rachel's living yeah. room. Mate. Yeah, 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 with a peat fire. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stunning. You just need David Brody to come over with his guitar. And He's welcome anytime. Anytime. 100% <laughs> is David, yeah. 
Delicious. Now, where are we at price point on this? Do you know roughly? You have to double check on the website Stevie's because we do, check. we do so many releases. <laughs> all right, you can't be expected to keep up with all of them. That's fair I think enough. it's around 85. Let me ask space. you this instead then. Three different ranges mm -hmm. for three very different sort of styles, right? Mm -hmm. What's your preference today? It depends really on the day, I guess. At these fairs, I like trying different things. So yep. if anything, wine, sherry, yeah, yeah, yeah. strange, unusual cast, sure. Okay. After day's work, coming back after five o'clock, just sitting down in my living room, probably a peated ex bourbon not cast. Bad. So I love bourbon the Buna cast. Haben. I know okay. it's not bourbon, but the peat quid. itself is amazing. For sure, for sure. Okay, that's lovely to hear. Really, really interesting. Cool. We're at 95 pounds. 95 pounds? Yeah. You know what, dude? They sell all day long at that, to be honest. Yeah. I know it's not cheap. Sure. It's not cheap. Um, that's where Buna sells out all day long. So I just got offered a bunch of Stoysha casks. So. That's stupid money. Like, fuck off money. Do you know what I mean? Just well, doesn't yeah. make any sense. So, yeah, I hear that. Should we uh, have a bit of a roundup, gents? Or are we still sort of getting involved and enjoying these? I'm trying to pick out the sweetness in here. Are you getting much of that? The sweetness? The sweet notes. The sheets of sweetness. I'm struggling a little bit. What, to like denote what it is? Almost just... It's there for me, can't denote it, but the bonfire is just so potent and I like it. It is very prominent. Um, you, yes. You take a sip, there is that brief millisecond of sweet gentleness, and then all of a sudden you are consumed. <laughs> you are a firefighter that is battling off flames. <laughs> it's it's heavy, right? It's hard work what we do, it's hard work. I know, exactly. You also get here. some tobacco in the aftertaste. For sure, for like sure. It's leaves. interesting because you've now mentioned cigars, tobacco leaf a few times. Yeah. So I don't know if it's subliminal messaging, but you said it now as well. So yeah, yep. there is an element of that definitely. Um, and just seaweedy peats, like. But I mean, not that I ever did it. This, this to me, as I said, like I, I'm definitely getting that kind of like tarry part of the seaweed. This feels like, you know, like stealing your granddad's like unfiltered Marlboro in like the seventies. <laughs> or something like <laughs> a 50 year old cigarette <laughs> were you smoking that young were you mate blimey nice. uh, cool then let's do a round up let's do a round up indeed yeah cool uh, let's start with the black ball black ball I think £37.50 I think I saw it for cool right, right so less than £40 pounds. less than 40 quid. less than £40 pounds, yep. depending on where you're buying it Stevie buy from me buy Less than forty pounds. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh! I thought you were fucking questioning. Really? Me. No, I so did I. Fair play. No, I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I think for less than forty quid, 50 percent, twelve-year-old age statement. Yeah. I like the new branding. It's great. Dib, dib, dib. Fair play. Yeah. Wow. I'm not gonna give it that that strong. I'm gonna say strong buy. Strong buys all round, definitely. I'm not going to quite give it an oosh. I think that I get where you're coming from, though, right? The yeah. flavor is there. The percentage is there. The fucking price point, Gabby. Very, very good. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Re hey, listen, don't be sorry. I was going to say you might want to reconsider it, but what am I doing? No. No. Keep it exactly where it is. £37 is a really accessible price point for anyone at home who wants to try something. That's a, a good, a really strong everyday yeah. sipper, right? Black ball. Get it in your basket, right? Are you buying it, Gabby? Well, I have a bottle on my table. She's got a bottle at home, Because it's also one of these whiskeys that, you know, you're not going to spend a lot of money. So if your friends come over and then drink you empty, you're not going to be crying over the bottle of whiskey sure, because sure. it's not a thousand pounds, whatever. Yeah. You can Definitely. easily replace it. Definitely. Ian's terrible for drinking thousand pounds worth of whiskey when he comes over. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the friends coming over? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so we've got the Octave then, the Brackler, 2011. Stevie, where'd you stand? Uh, well, price point, it's the 11-year-old, isn't it? 2011, 11-year-old, we're at... Yeah, sorry, it's a 12-year-old, yeah. dude. It was bottled this year. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, then, uh, I've got the wrong price up. Got the 11-year-old. Nine months in an octave, 12-year-old, 53-2. Bracker. Where are we at? 95 quid. Or 70 quid on the Spirits MC, but it's out of stock. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pass up on this. It's a don't buy. That means I don't like it. It's a great whiskey, but... Um, yeah, no, I'm going to pass it up. It's a pass? It's a pass for me on that one, yeah, for the price point. Pounds, no. 
Um, I think that's still a buy. At 70, it's a death, that's a pretty strong buy as well. Correct, yeah, sorry. If, if for 70 quid, yes. 95, which is the other retailers. Not not for me, really. Lovely whiskey, though. Are you buying it, Ian? 95 pound? 95 quid, Ian. Yeah. yeah. Sold. Ian's stretching. I like it. For <laughs> me, it's a very, very strong buy at 70 pounds. I have to agree with you, Stevie. 95 pounds, probably pushing it a little bit too much. What does that mean? Well, it means you need to watch out for the Octave releases because they're obviously selling on your websites at very accessible yes. price points. Yes. And when they sell out quickly because they've got a good following, they're selling at higher price points. So I'm not going to go in at the higher price point of £95. £75 is a fucking all day long, strong buy, delicious Brackler doing what it does best. And, get, uh, and get Gabby, with this one, mm-hmm. have you got this one as well? Is the Brackler one of your favourite ones? or Brackler is a good distillery. I like the flavor profile, but um, like I said, I can chase cherry whiskies, uh, okay. cherry finished whiskies, but it's not something I normally drink myself. Okay. So ex bourbon pizzas. Okay, so not one of your favorite ones, this one? It's a good one. Uh, people like it. We got really good reviews at festivals. Um, and it's a good brackler, like I said, but Very it's one of these things that you might have after dinner, but not something you'd be drinking just after work <laughs> yeah. or something. Okay, okay. I have to say, I'd be drinking it myself for 70 pounds, but fair enough. After dinner, by myself, whenever. I'm enjoying it. I think it's good. Finally, moving on to the uh, the Stoich. I believe it's ninety-five pounds. Did we say? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think seven. It's a it's a strong buy for me. I really enjoyed this. It's the first whiskey today that has challenged me. It's given me a bit of a, a kick in the face. You yeah. know, that strong bonfire, and I've got the sweetness now. And that sweetness for me at the beginning there is stewed apples. You know, that really street sweet, soft, warm apples, and then that bonfire comes through for me. This is great. I really like this. So uh, yeah, okay. well done. Uh, I'm going to surprise you, I think, and I'm actually going to go for a don't buy on this yeah. one. I think just because, compared to some other styles that I've had, it is a little bit more on that medicinal side, that's just not so much to my personal taste. Okay. I think, you know, I've seen other styles, like, I think it's good value for money, but don't get me wrong, and I think it is interesting, because like Steve said, it is challenging as well. Um, it's just, it's something I'm very, very glad I've tried. I wouldn't personally buy a bottle just because of my own flavor profile. I hear you, I hear you. I, think- to, I thought I was going to be the one coming out of left field. I wouldn't buy it either. And it's because of the price point, that alone. I love the flavor. It is challenging. It is heavy. It is different for a Stoisha. I love all of those things. I think at 95 pounds, I can't quite explain it to myself. You didn't enjoy it enough. I'm just going to have some of your bottle, mate. The... That's what it is, right? I'm coming over to yours. I'm nipping into your bottle. And that's what's yeah, happening. well, only if I'm you're invited, mate. My own. I'm going to have some of yours. <laughs> it's a really, really delicious whiskey, and I would encourage people to get out there. And if you don't want to buy a bottle, see if you can find somewhere that you can try a dram, right? Come to a whiskey show. Or come to a whiskey show where you can definitely try a dram and have a chat with somebody wonderful like Gabby who'll tell you all about the processes that went into making the whiskey. For me... Yeah, I thought I would be the only one, so unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, it's a don't buy from me. Gabby, yeah. you were just saying how much you love these peated whiskies. Yeah. Talk to us. Is this kind of up there for you? Or? Yeah, it is up there for me. Yeah. I would buy this one because uh, I said it's like, like ex, uh, not necessarily ex bourbon cast, but also just peated whiskey. So yeah. for me, that's definitely a buy. Also, I agree with you because it is more on the medicinal side. So I think lots of Lafroy or Ardbeck aficionados, they would probably go for this one too. For sure. Because I think when you have peated whiskey drinkers, you have these groups, either Arabic, Lafroy, more medicinal, or something like Bruna Haben and, you know, Khalil yeah. and so on. But I think this is a transitional whiskey, let's call it that. That's a good way of putting it. And you know what? If you look at it as a transitional whiskey, price point for Arbegs, Lafroy's of similar age, similar quality, it's going to be a lot higher. How right? much do you pay for the eight-year-old discussion bowl, right? For sure, more than £100. Oh, so yeah, if yeah. you look at it as that transitional whiskey, Maybe it is worth every single penny. Who's to argue? Are you changing you your mind? Buy a bottle, decide for yourself. Are you changing your mind? No, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> saying I can appreciate Gabby's point. I was just, I was just, you know, coming from every side of it, mate. I hear you, man. I try to be diplomatic. I hear you. I love it. I think it's a great whiskey. But most importantly, it's been wonderful to sit down and chat with you, Gabby. Thank you so much for sharing these wonderful whiskeys with us and with everyone at home. Um, but yeah, I think, Stevie, you hit the nail on the head, right? You've got to get down to these shows. Oh, sorry, it was you, Ian, wasn't it? You've got to get down to these shows, try these whiskeys, and get involved. It's the best way to figure out what you want to buy, right? 
So um, cool. and thank you so much for the chat and for inviting me. And that's why it's nice working with Duncan Taylor because we have so many different products. So and even the yeah. discussion here that we you have obviously different flavor profiles that you're looking for. So sure. and it's nice to work with a brand that has so many options. So we we have something to offer for everyone, basically. Definitely, definitely. Guys, get along to a show. Head over to the Duncan Taylor stand, and if Gary's there. Grab her, make sure she shares some of these wonderful whiskeys with you. Loads of knowledge, reading sites of jobs. Thank you so much for coming over and sharing with us, Gabby. Thank you. Really Thanks, Gabby. Thank you. Nice. Really, cool. really appreciate it. So, so, we've got a couple more left. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. We got two. No, we're gonna grab the last two. Please do. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got... Um, For a healthy jam, so you can share it. Cat and head still to get. And Woody's. And Woody, so absolutely, let's keep going. We're an hour and 30 in, so... Won't be the longest episode we've done. Let's go. So, Ian, did you try the... Uh, you tried the Black Ball 30 at the show? I, I did not try the Black Ball 30 at the show. Ah. I... Uh, what did you have from the stand there at the whiskey show? I had that Port Ellen I mentioned before. There was incredible. A 43-year-old from 1980. I had a 30-year-old Springbank from the Octave stand. And did you go for the Macallan as well? Did you try that? No, I then had, I think, a 27-year-old then Grant. Good choices. Very good choices. This is such a good fucking show! This is cool, right? I love it, man. This is cool. I'm enjoying myself. Fucking bees out. Drams out. <laughs> Woo! You know this is your job, right? I know. Yeah. I'm working hard, man. You are. Working hard, you know? hardly working. We're cracking away. Someone's got to do it. Huh? Someone has to do it. Someone's got to fucking do it. And unfortunately, it's you, Put man. the hours. Unfortunately, it's you, 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 what, you know. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm de- we're, we're a little bit divisive on that story show. Yeah. It's a really good liquid. It's I've been waiting really for a Pete all day. A pizza fucking... You're fucking up. Uh, big, yeah. big pizza. Yeah, you know. in the door. It really does. <laughs> yeah, it? you know what I mean? That's what I like. That's cool. what I like. Very, very cool. Well, Jake, I think it's your turn to do a supermarket sweep and go and find our next guest. Oh, I'll hand you my phone. Want? Who do we want? Well, like, who's two, left? Two left to go. So we've got the Woodrow guys. And Cadenheads. And Cadenheads. I'll see who I can grab. So right. Is this uh, selfie mode? Or You're recording. Else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's go and find <laughs> our next guest here. <laughs> For the show! <laughs> well, that's properly... He's running, man. Off. He's running. For you at home who are watching on YouTube, you will... Uh... We're cut to the, the camera of Jake running around like Dale Winton back in the early 90s grabbing someone um but yeah guys hopefully we're gonna also uh film a uh quick video if we can of us actually walking around the show today it will be over probably on the whiskey baron channel i imagine um and we can kind of show you a bit more what's going on here um the stands and what's really interesting at the uh, edinburgh whiskey festival today is it's not just whiskey they've got uh, people painting they've got Pete live cooperage they've got um, obviously us live podcast and there's all sorts of interactive experiences going on which I think is really 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 cool so uh, <laughs> um, but yeah Ian are you enjoying today how's it going I'm so far a great time yeah tell us tell us more what are you looking forward to when we uh, when we wrap this episode to going out there and what have you got your eyes on to go and drink? Oh, I had my eyes on a pie, to be honest, mate. But on a what? A pint? A pie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's no draft beer here, mate. <laughs> um, I to be honest, I reckon we're, you know, we're lucky, aren't we? We're going to get people to come to us with their whiskey for the most part. We're getting, yeah, we are getting bought some cracking uh bottles i must say um so yeah maybe maybe there'd be no need to go out there and choose some bottles you know so uh yeah i think uh who are these guys right here next to us oh we've got someone yeah we haven't just got someone we have got the lovely megan Thanks, dude. From Woodrow. You're there. Yeah, yeah, you're there. Yeah. 
Just pull the mic around, sit back, sit on the edge, wherever you want to do, get comfy. Um, I'll come and move the mic for you. A present. That's very kind. Twelve year old Glenn oh, Billy just give it to us there. I love that. I tell you what, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to grab you. We have a few wishes for you, yeah? Sounds great, man. Thanks, my guy. I fucking love that. Bit of a joker here, just giving us 12-year-old Glenn <laughs> Amazing. We're not going to rip into that just yet. We've just sat down with the lovely Megan from Woodrow. That's right. Am I right in saying you're one of the, the owners, founding members? Uh, yeah, me and my partner together. We're co-owners, yeah. Co-owners. So, Sorry. one of the main people behind Woodrow's. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves and where should we start? Okay. And then we can sort of have a bit of a chat about you and the whiskies as we go. Perfect. So we are an independent bottler. Yeah. Uh, we source cast from various places around the country and we keep the best ones for ourselves. Lovely. And we bottle those under Woodrow's. Cool. And uh, sometimes we'll source cast like empty sherry casks from Spain or empty port casks from France and we'll re-rack them into there to give it a nice finish. Okay. So we sort of play around with the liquid. We always bottle it at cast strength. We've got a few blends coming out in the horizon as well, so we're starting to do blending as well. Lovely. So Lots yeah. of interesting stuff coming there. Yeah, we only launched a year ago, so we're about 13 months old as a as a brand. So I'll tell you what. Ben Nevis, Pulteney, Bunnahaven, just strong of the brands that you brought with you today. Yeah. It's yeah. a pretty fucking impressive lineup for oh. such a young, like, you know, independent bottler. That's, uh. Yeah, well, we were cast trading before that. Okay. So okay, that's okay. how we so got, got our hands good on some stuff. good cast. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I like We've been it. building our portfolio up for a while. It was okay. all planned. Very good. I love patience. it. Patience. Need patience. Well, I tell you what, there's no <laughs> other way in whiskey than a little bit of patience, right? Oh, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> Where would you like to start today, Megan? What should we start so, with? Where do we run through? The lightest one is the Pulteney. So I always like to start with a lighter one. Perfect. Let's do that. Let's do I'm going to rinse out my glass. And have we got a glass for Megan? I was going to say, man. Is there one in the, uh, the bags up there? <laughs> we need, okay, we need to grab I'm going to go grab a bag. Do you mind? Thank you, my guy. <laughs> okay, so the Pulteney first. So first fill bourbon barrel, 57A. You say everything is at Castor Everything you know? we bottle is at okay. Castor yeah. And this is exclusively from a first fill bourbon barrel. Okay, cool. Yes. Very, very cool. So it's a hogshead, so it's 225 bottles of it exists. So once it's gone, it's gone. It's 15 year old Pulteney. I'm going to let you pour yours first. I'm going to drink my water. I'm the only one with a clean glass. Isn't it? So it's one of our newer releases. We released it about, it must be about six months ago now, actually. So you want me to read the post? Yeah. So set up about a year or so ago. Yep. You've got some brand blends on the rise, and you've got some awesome single casts out already mm -hmm. what's the aim what is it that you guys are here to do what is, what's your what's your purpose so our main purpose is what we want to do is we want to position ourselves in the market in that when you, if you look at our branding it's quite basic we don't do an awful lot of marketing so we don't spend a lot of money on marketing we want to keep that money and put it in the liquid so our goal is to have the best quality liquid we can get for the best price okay that's sort of our goal and we want to have a range of different things um, obviously as a, from a company's point of view we want to grow we want to expand that will take some time of course um, but yeah independent bottling having the trying to have the best quality stuff for the most reasonable price we don't care about the, what the bottle looks like we care about what's in the bottle so that's sort of where we're at I love it Great. thank you I missed what have I missed anything uh, we just like uh, pouring the just gonna pour you a, a pulpy, my guy. And, and the... Don't want to ruin the second. Surprise, but it's really I need to really good. rinse out this. Uh, uh, you rinse it out. I'm this uh, Stoisha. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might like this one, mate. What's this? So you were cask trading beforehand, also as Woodrose. Yeah. Uh, no, our parent company, Eastland Alba. Okay. I say parent Thank company as if we're huge. Just the whole company's just me and my partner. Lovely. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair enough. Okay, cool. But yeah. And how long had you been cask trading for before setting up as a buffer? I think 2018. Okay. So we, yeah, five, we've got five or so years. You've yeah, been we've got a little too. warehouse. We have all our stock in there, and well, oh. yeah, most of our stock in there. So. Yeah, it's been a, a long time coming. It was one of those things like we finally launched, you know, Woodrow's, finally. 
<laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I have to say, oh. I'm glad it's oh. finally here. Oh. Oh, oh. oh. hello. <laughs> that is good. From the nose to the palate. Obviously, Heaps a lot of, of people fruit. will know Pulteney as Old Pulteney. Yes. Which, which is one of those interesting ones. In the uh, in the cask format, as a brand, it is just Pulteney, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, 15 year old. You don't see Pulteney very often in, in, in cask format as no. in, independently bottled, I wouldn't say. It's dotted around here and there, but it's not one of the main ones that you no, see. No, like, no. you always see Kalila, you always see Dunahavin. For me, Glen Alec even, but um, don't really see much Pulteney. For sure. But you Perfect. do occasionally get the wee gem Pulteney here and there. I think you've got one of them. What do we reckon, gents? It's a bit yummy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we've already obviously had a few whiskies, but I'm <laughs> impressed by the intensity of the bourbon flavors coming through. Like the cask flavors. Coming. Seriously good, first of all, bourbon cask. I'm sorry, is this single cask? Yes, it all is. single cask. Sorry, yeah, far. I was obviously... The stuff that we're trying. So we've got a couple of blends on the way from Woodrose, which right. are going to be kind of core statements. You know? It's going to be similar bottle numbers. It's going to be small batch oh, okay. blending. Okay, all right, so all small batch from okay. Woodrose, at least for the foreseeable future then. Yes. But yeah, these are all single cask thus far. Cast strength? Yeah. Okay. Everything cast cool, strength, cool, this cool. is 57.8. Cool. Oh, lovely. What? 57. Eight. Okay, yeah, it doesn't... It does not it's so taste smooth, it, does it? isn't it, for yeah. a 57.8? Yeah, it does not taste like that at all. I'd say low 50s, 51, yeah. 52. Really, really good quality bourbon. Although. Dangerous. It is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Mmm. <laughs> It's actually quite dry, mm. yeah. considering it's first fill bourbon at the back end. Mm. Yeah, again, the kind of tannins come through. It's, it's sweet, it's juicy to start with. There's a bit of kind of like a fruit salad vibe going on to begin with before yeah. the, the wood comes through. But there is quite a bit of wood at the back end. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. I like. I appreciate, sorry, saying this, it may sound negative to people like, oh, well, it's, it's wood. But no, I actually... But again, it's, it's like what I said before. It's like the it's the intensity of that first fill, but like a good quality first yeah. fill bourbon cask coming through. Right? Coming through, yeah. They got exactly. the classic honey, fudge, vanilla, all from the bourbon. Yeah. But then it's got and that fudge, classic Pulteney characteristics as well. Yeah. It does have the the fudge, the vanilla. The, it does. But uh, what I would say is, it's got more of a backbone than because I think sometimes people think, you know, bourbon matured. Oh, it's vanilla, it's fudge, it's that. It's just very soft and it's basic, right? Yes. This has got such a big backbone of spices. And wood spices. And then you've got the, but it's not just a little touch of vanilla, it's like deep vanilla extract. It's, it's a lot. There's actually a lot going on in this draft. The drying <clears throat> comes from us being fooled that it's a lower percentage, but at 58, did you say? 57.8%. 57.8. That's where the drying comes out. Strong alcohol is there. But it's not... Like, you can't taste the alcohol, but it's obviously drying your mouth out because you've got that kind of sweetness. Of, I think also the wood. The you reckon? The wood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's interesting for a bourbon cast, though. I don't normally get that as drying with a bourbon cast. Where are you at price point on this? That one is about £80. Pounds. Oh. oh, that's oh, really right. good. Yeah. <laughs> I was really nervous to ask that question because I was thinking you were going to say 120 plus. Okay, no, it's definitely below 100. It's, it's below 90, I think. I think it's about 85. I, yeah, I was going to say at least 120. I need to have a price quid. list in front of me. Sometimes I get forgetful. Uh, look, roughly, <laughs> we'll take a rough. We'll take a yeah. rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Less it's, than 100 pounds. This is very good. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And actually, even with the kind of five minutes I've been holding this, it's benefited from a little bit of time in the glass as well. I think, you know, pour it out, leave it 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. I like everything at cast strength. I don't like adding water to things personally, but I know some people like to add water to it and they say it brings out all the other flavors. That... For sure. You know, I, I'd probably be more on your lines of leaving it to sit. And like yeah. you said at the beginning, of the three, certainly looks the most delicate. And you'd imagine Pulteney yeah. of the three being fairly delicate. Um, but yeah, I'd agree. I think leaving it to sit for 20 minutes would probably just allow it to open up into this symphony of, you know, 
not that it's not there already it's wonderful but I think that the the first Phil Bourbon is very prominent certainly in my mind anyway maybe I'm just locking into that at the minute yummy though what do you want to try next or sorry Megan what should we try next is probably what I should um, be asking you let's go with the Buna Haven 11 the Buna yeah it's not as complex as the Ben Nevis. I like to finish on the most complex round. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, so this is just already a winner for Ian. So Been a having fan here. First, oh, just a bit, just a little bit. <laughs> he might kill you for the rest of this bottle. <laughs> take it, just take it. <laughs> so this is just <laughs> obviously. So this is eleven-year-old Buna, first fill Oloroso Sherry Hogshead. So um, it was mature. Sorry, sorry. Refill Hogshead and finished in an Oloroso Hogshead. How long was the finish? Uh, one year and 11 months. Okay. Cool. So two year finish, give or take. Yeah. 62.3. Woo. Mm. Double sherry. Thank you, mate. Well, look at that color already. That looks bloody wonderful. Thank you very much. That looks really cool. Well, there I we know, go. I'll just chuck it in there. There we Thank go. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mm. So this is just straight butter. Yes. Cool. Single cast. What a beautiful colour. It is lovely. Two years in Oloroso, you have picked a seriously good cask, haven't you? An active cask, yeah. It, was a, it wasn't wet when we put it in. I've been accused of that before. Have you? <laughs> like, oh, was there a bit of sherry left in that cask? I'm like, no, we it's never not that do dark. that. It's not that dark. No, it's not no, that no, dark. no. Oh. Hello. I know. <laughs> Dude, I literally, I took one whiff and I was like, well, this is Ian's fucking wet dream here. Like, this is literally everything you could ask for and more, isn't it? This is this is you in a bottle. Yeah. You like all it also as well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's such a depth of Oloroso, but that Buna distillery character is yeah. just there, right cutting through the center. Yeah. Oh. Fucking, I could... Are you alright, mate? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a moment. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Oh. oh, fuck. That's good. I feel like Owen Wilson. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. You wouldn't think it was 62%, eh? No. Oh, it drinks that's, like... That's the thing. I am shocked at the Oloroso is incredible. The Buna is just, like I say, it's right there in the center. It's unmistakably Buna. But at 62.3%. It drinks somewhere between like 5 to 10% below that. But Buna does that though, right? Yes, man. You know, Buna Harbin does that at high strengths. It works really well. But what's really interesting about that, sorry, <laughs> Buna Haven does that because Buna Haven as a distillery are exceptional when it comes to picking their cask, their wood policy. Second to none, right? What's interesting about this, is this is refill hogshead, very similar to the one that you've loved from us, right? Yeah. And then you finished it for nearly two years. So it's nine years in a refill hogshead versus our 16 years. But then it's been Megan and sorry, what's your partner's name? Woody. Megan and Woody have decided to put it into this. So it's not Buddha have it. It's an independent company that have selected this. And fuck me, could you work for Budahaven? <laughs> no, genuinely, I'm not even just saying that. The selection of this wood for this whiskey is exceptional. Yeah. I think this is the best whiskey I've tried today. What? Whoa. Definitely. This is the that's, best whiskey I've tried. That's this. fucking we big. Tried that many, but this is by far the best. Oh, I mean, today. we're at least on our 10th dram now, yeah. but. Should we do, yeah. But yeah. This is the best we've tried. Wow. Thank Definitely. you. Wow. So you it's prefer like that to the Pultley then? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 more complex. I'm, I'm, I'm with Jake. This is great. So good. So good. So good. So good. Uh, I want another clean glass. I don't want to leave that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep we were keeping day. the bottle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Megan, where well, are we well, at price point with this? Well, I was going to die if I didn't give you, well, right? She said, five, but she said less than 100 pounds, definitely, right? So the Buna Haven is no, no, no. The Buna Haven's also less than a hundred. I, oh, what is it? We retail at. It's less than ninety, I think. Right. It's for the Buna. 
It's it definitely less than 100. I it think it's everyone about that. 85. Hell, like, that's the crazy. Shop. Where's the shop? Where's the shop? That's, that's crazy. Trying to sell bottles here, mate. What do you mean, don't sell everyone? No, we're buying them all. It's fine. <laughs> right now. Yeah, this is what honest. we're all about. It's about good quality liquid the for the most reasonable price we can do it. For that's sure. what we're all about. For sure. Love it. Love it. The marketing's terrible. You've seen our signs. It's no pish. That's on our sign. <laughs> that's our tagline. What's your tagline say? It's no pish. It certainly yeah. fucking isn't. This yeah. is... <laughs> That's a good tagline. No, there's zero marketing, but good liquid, good price. That's what we're all about. I'll do your marketing for you. This is fucking exceptional. <laughs> you need to check out Woodrose. The Pulteney was very good. <laughs> this is fucking I, I'm delicious. looking forward to the quote on your website now. This is fucking exceptional. Jake. <laughs> cut it, cut it. Hashtag it's no pitch. Yes. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Where did you source the wood from? This cast Woody sourced it. I wish okay. I could tell you. Uh, a lot of our casts come from Spain. And you are you very specific with provenance? Do you work with specific bodegas or anything like that? Or are you just kind of buying casks where you need them? Uh, so we have good relationships with various sherry uh, producers. Yeah. And we just get their casks from them. Cool. Yes. Cool. I want to go to Spain someday and just see all the sherry distilleries and... For sure. It would be a good business trip. Yeah, I'll listen, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. One day. This is exceptional. Exceptional. But yeah, Woody does the cast sourcing, so... Well, I will shake his hand later because fuck me, he's done a good he's job. He's very good. He's very, very, very good, good at sourcing casks. So, Megan, you guys have been selling casks. You're now bottling, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Love to see young independent bottlers in the space. What is it that drew you into whiskey? Why did you start? Like so, Woody initially did his degree in brewing and distilling. Ah, okay, cool. Um, whereas I went down the neuroscience route, which was stupid of me. I regret that. <laughs> okay. That sounds really interesting, though. Uh, yeah, so I was a neuroscientist for about... Well, I was a reproductive biologist for about three years, and then I was a neuroscientist for about seven. Okay. And then I decided to do whiskey full-time because it's more fun. I would, instead of being locked in a lab doing the petting, I can be drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, for you sure. know. Um, but yeah, so we initially got into cast training. When we first launched our company, we were actually doing beer at first, oh, okay. which was a decision we don't fully regret, but I don't think it was the smartest choice for you us. Pivoted quickly. Yeah, we realised whiskey in Scotland is the one. makes sense. For sure, just makes sense. For sure. Beer. It was we started during the craft beer boom back in 2016. Ah, okay. We we're like, let's try and get in on that. But then we sort of turned to whiskey. And I don't regret that. Ever. No, not a decision How I regret. How could you when you've got this in yeah. the fucking bottle? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, we all are we all coming to a finish? I'm really savouring this. So. No, I am. I'm holding on to this last drop here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're if we to need to move on, <laughs> you can get pour, some more glasses. pour yourself a new one if you want, mate. I'm really savouring this. Um, <laughs> okay, so you, you sort of slowly moved in and... You're not moving back out from, no. the, from the sounds of it. No, whiskey is the place to be. It really and is. Have you got a good amount? I mean, what are you? What are your plans? Like releases? Are you looking to set like a number of releases per year? Or are you just waiting patiently whilst everything matures at its own rate? So our next release will be in December. Okay. We have picked out about two casts so far okay. that we're planning to release then. Can you tell anything about that? There'll or? be an old green. Okay. We're deciding between two. Okay. One's a Port Dundas, the other one's a Garvin. Okay. And we're deciding at the moment between which one. Roughly how old are we talking here? 15 plus, 20 plus? Uh, 30. 30? Yeah. Sorry, the Port Dundas and a... Port Dundas or a Gervan? We're deciding okay. at the moment. Circa 30 years old. Nice. Cool. Well, we're what, what deciding. Are we talking? Bourbon, cherry? Uh, bourbon. No. Nice. Classic grain, Classic. you know, light. Nice. Easy drinking. Yeah, yeah. Smooth, cool. short Still finish. sat in the original casks. Yes, yes. Just doing what they do. Yes. Cool, yeah, yeah. We, didn't, right. we don't want to play with something that old. It's just as it is, you know? For sure, for sure. Uh, but we don't want to release two grains. So we'll release that and something else. Okay. Cool. We we pick our cast like the week before we release them. Okay. Me and Woody sit in the kitchen and we taste it. Like this is 
Because we don't want to taste it six months in advance, you know, because it might change. We do the tasting literally a week before in our kitchen and we argue a little bit and then we release what I see. <laughs> how, how is it? Yeah. Okay, we got go. the right part there. I like that. Yeah. I like that. The you, right you, half of the team. You is just right answered my question. So I was going to say, how is it working with your partner? Because I'd be like, we would be at each other's throats all the time. So but in he, fairness, if Megan's picking the liquid and Woody's sourcing the casks, at least they have a good input each, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fair play. <laughs> That's cool. I He's like that. He's also my life partner. I'll say that too. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> oh my God. I can't. You're going to have to move on, my friend, because there's a Ben Nevis. Pull, pull, pull the Ben Nevis. Pull the Ben, ben Nevis. Nevis. I'm really excited point. about the Ben Nevis. I don't Nevis. even want to know about the Ben Nevis. I don't want to move on. It's the problem. <laughs> I think the Ben I, Nevis was your kind of pick that you wanted to bring over here. We're tasting, we're tasting a few different bits. We're tasting the Woodrow stuff at the minute, but we are filming a podcast. You can jump over. There is a stand right over there where you can try all of the Woodrow stuff. Nice one, my guy. Thank you. Okay. Go to the Woodrow stand. <laughs> Feel free, man. <laughs> podcast bombing. <laughs> we got, okay, this Ben Nevis. Megan, you're going to have to tell us about this. So it says, various American and European oak Oloroso and PX blood tubs. Yes. Wow. So we had a hogshead of uh, Ben Nevis, and then we took eight octave casks. So as you know, it's a little tiny cask. Some were American oak, some were European oak. We had PX and Oloroso and different combinations of that. Smaller than uh, They matured in those casks for nine months. And then we vatted them back together again. And this is the result. I love that you call them blood tubs, though, because that's something that you don't hear very much nowadays. They're tiny, tiny cups. Teeny so smaller right. than an octave. But yeah. this is the thing, you don't hear of blood okay, tubs so, at all. Okay, question So small. Then. Are blood tubs the same as octaves or smaller than octaves? I don't think there's anything set for a size of a blood tub or an octave. Right. And so arguably they could be the same, but I... Blood I tubs think are generally smaller, They're right? slightly smaller. I wish I could tell you how much smaller. I would normally say a blood tub is about half the size of a yeah. blood tub. Oh, that's what I, that's, that was what that I would be thinking. my, yeah. but... I'd say a 16th. Octaves can differ yes. quite very. Well, a 16th. A 16th, yes, exactly, which would be half <laughs> which an Which would be half, we're yeah. half of an eighth, yeah. right, for sure. See, that's a neuroscientist in me, all about the maths. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I thought Thank you'd been you were being paid. How rude. rude. All right. All right. How rude. I know. You know, Cancel we, me bring, now, we bring a guest on and you're you know, even blood tub. I was excited. All right. I was excited about the Ben Nervous. Fuck off. I got a yeah. question for you guys. Anyone know where the word blood tub comes from? What's the meaning behind that? Well, I think after that folly, we're going to cut Jake up and see whether we can fill him into a blood tub. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I've read something about it, but no, I can't remember off the okay. top of the dome, mate. No. Fair, fair. It's cool, but, uh, presumably, I would imagine, because of the depth of colour that you're going to get off of it. That's what I was kind of thinking, yeah. But yeah, I yeah, read yeah. something about this, and it was years ago. And yeah, I don't yeah. Remember. So, it's a guess. Right. There you go. There you go. Someone will correct us in the comments. Someone I'm will sure. be like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> but I don't care, because I've got nine-year-old Ben Nevis. I tell you what, I'm glad we moved on from the Bunner. This is good. You've yeah. got a couple of different styles coming out of Ben Nevis now. Peated, unpeated. I'm, I'm guessing this is unpeated Ben Nevis. This is unpeated, yeah. 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 Oh, this is good. I don't even need to take us up. You can tell from the nose, right? It's very complex. There's so very much complex. On. There's a lot going on. You've got the sweetness, you've got the savory, you've got the sulfur, you've got everything. Oh, wow. You really do have sulfur. Mm. I didn't get, I, I'm not getting the sulfur on the nose at all. On the nose? No. Uh, on the palate, though. I get a touch. I get a I'm touch. not getting any of it. It's our second sulfuriest that we have on the table today. Okay, what's the most? Our duff down. I'll it's our marmite. It's our marmite of dram. Some people say too sulfur. I love that. The sulfur lovers love it. I will probably love it. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's too much. It's very present. It, yeah, it's but you still present. got that sweetness that kind of like cuts through that sulfur, you know? Yeah. yeah. It does tame it. I think I'm a bit more sensitive than, than either of you guys are. But I still... I don't get any of it on the notes. Right. Uh, yeah, I said, I, I definitely get it there. That's <laughs> really interesting. It's, it's, it's not even on the palate, Jake. Sorry? No sulfur on the palate. On the pa no, sorry. That's what I was saying to Ian. 
Yeah. Sorry, I think we're struggling to hear each other. A it's bit. a little bit loud. I'm saying, I get this. I as soon as I took a sup, I get the sulfur bang on the gotcha. palate. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not getting so. a touch of it on the nose. No, though. nor am I. And so that's what's quite interesting. He picked it up straight away. No, not for you. me. Not for me. But they, they, you're right. You're absolutely right, Megan. The complexity of this gram is very interesting. That's why I finished it last. <laughs> sorry. That's you... why I asked to have it last. Of course, right, for sure. And sorry, the finish, how many different types of cast did it, was it finished in? Eight. And sorry, each of different provenance or just eight separate, like, were there two of the same? So or... some of them were American wood, some were European wood, some were, uh, you know, PX cast, some were all of us. And it was just different variations of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And why did you, I mean, fascinating and it's worked. So, oh, thank you know, you. well done. Why did you decide to do that? Because I have to say, as somebody who's got Ben Nevis in cast now, and it's looking for more and it's constantly seeing the price just tick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would personally feel very Here? wary and a yeah. little bit panicky and scared about the idea of getting a hogshead, which has stayed in good tack for, what, eight or so years, mm. and re-racking that into eight blood tubs. Because so, the, the, the risk for leakage is much higher, right? That's true. And people don't talk about that sort of thing. Like, you've created something really awesome here. It's and unique. there are... 168 bottles, which is great. It could have been that there was a lot less bottles if one of those blood tubs were leaking. Right? Yeah. So what was the decision making process? So the idea is it was a follow on from our Khalil experiment. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm -hmm. We'd done a similar experiment, but instead of vats get back together, we released them all separately in a little sort of, it was like a little set of eight different bottles. Cool, I love it. And they were all separate. Yeah. This, we did the same thing and we went, what if we've had it back together again? Okay. So the initial idea was to sell them again in those little eight little bottles. Yeah. And it was sort of like to experience the different cask finishes and how that affects the same liquid. That was sure. the idea of the Kalila. And we thought to do the same thing again. And we went, what if we just fat it back together again this time? To yep. see what we get. And that's what we got. So experimentation. Yeah. I Me love and Woody, it. we both uh, were scientists in the past. So he, he did his medical science degrees as well. Oh, wow. So we're both right. science. Well, Highly educated people here getting into whiskey, which I feel is like for the wrong ones, probably because I'm part of the fucking industry, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are coming at it like we experiment. We do what you we guys do. are coming at it from a scientific point of view, though. I guess I you love can see that. that. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> it works. Whatever the decision making process was, I have to say, it's fucking good in glass, right? It's delicious. It's Sweet delicious. Glass. I'm getting almost most like this like sweet pastry kind of note from it, you know? Like after the um well that sulfur. That sulfur comes yeah. and then it's just like, as I say, sweetness cuts right through it. Okay, okay. Like yep. French Does it dissipate yeah. for you? Um, the sulfur? <laughs> I think over a longer period than it does for you. But it kind of gives it a little bit of depth that gives it a little bit of meatiness sure um, so yeah it's not unpleasant at all but it does kind of linger through into the finish right right you enjoying it mate <laughs> yeah <laughs> really good really fucking good I'm delighted that we asked you over Megan you oh. are a winner as is Woodrose. This one's also about 80 pounds. Oh, fuck. 85, I think. It's really good value for money. Where are you buying your casks from? That's what Except I want to know. No, no, no. We're not talking about that now. I'm going to talk to her about that off camera <laughs> so that none of the cask whiskey assholes out there get their hands on any of it. Um, right. This We've is what had... we're all about. And I love that. I love that. We're about Zero drinkers. Marketing. We're about Zero. drinkers. We're about whiskey and bottles. We're about sharing it with people. I love it, Megan. You are a winner in my book. Oh, thank you. Let's give it a bit of a round up, guys. We've got three delicious drams. We started 15 year old Pulteney, which you said is about 95 pounds. It's cheaper than that. Cheaper than, that. Cheaper than 95 pounds. Cheaper than that. Stevie. Honestly, it depends where you buy it. Different retailers sell different, but it's all okay. around nine, uh, and sorry, 85 to 90. Sorry, that's a good point. If we want to buy your stuff and the people at home, where do we go? So we have a few retailers. Okay. Uh, we don't sell ourselves through the website, um, but we have, for example, like Jeffrey Street in Edinburgh. They're one of our friends. They do they do really good for us. We're in okay. Inverary Whiskey Shop, Aberdeen Whiskey Shop. Uh, we're in... Cork and Cast. But if you at least Google our name, you'll see all the retailers that sell for us and you can buy through their websites. 
Fantastic. All right, cool. So plenty of retailers out there where you can source this stuff from. Let's give it a rating. Uh, sorry, Megan, I'm not sure if you know, on the Uncut and Unfiltered podcast, we always give stuff a buy, a don't buy, an oosh if it's really fucking good, or a bin it if it's really bad. Okay, I'm nervous okay now. I'm nervous. I think you're okay on the bin it front, don't worry. <laughs> I think you're safe on that front. Stevie, we start with the polny. We'll start with you, my guy. Yeah. Buy, don't buy, where do you stand? Polny, I, I'm not the biggest fan of, I'll be honest, normally, okay? okay. However, for cheaper than 90 quid you said or 95 pounds at 15 years old that was delicious i really really enjoyed that it's a very very strong buy from me so well done on that that's cool. fucking awesome yeah. nice start i like it ian great value yes tastes good buy exceptional value yes buy <laughs> buy buy it <laughs> and obviously megan you own the company so you bought the cask you drink the whiskey all the time Ush. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I was going to ask you, which is your favorite of the three? How does the Pulteney rank? Is it first, second, or third? Just a number on the Pulteney. Oh my God. It like asked me to choose one of my babies. I am. <laughs> choose one of your children. <laughs> oh my God. It depends on my mood. I'll say two. Two. All right, cool. Moving on, we had a Buna Haven from heaven. Stevie, 11 year old Buna Haven. And sorry, Megan, what was the price on this again? Circa 85 pounds? Yeah. Circa 85. Say 90. Say 90, just to push it out, just in case. It's another strong buy. Single cast, cast strength, natural color, non chill filtered, Buna Haben. It's delicious. It's sweet, it's sticky, it's fucking lovely. It's a very strong buy for me, and I know what you're going to say. So take it say, away. Stevie, there, we're you're in, off of your rocket. We're, yeah. we're, <laughs> we're, we're in an environment where you can really let it go, mate. So do <laughs> it. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. <laughs> like scary I, ghost! Yeah, I know, right? That was set for Halloween. I don't know what that was. I have to say, it's Friday the thirteenth yesterday. I agree. I agree a hundred percent with Ian. I think you're mad. Yeah, maybe. To give a strong buy to this is a slap in the face to this delicious whiskey. <laughs> to say to strongly buy it is an offence to Megan. <laughs> you are... Megan, are you offended? You, you, to be leave, fair, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. I think so. This is an oosh! I quit. This is a fucking delicious whiskey. This is the best whiskey of the day thus far. Wow. But I haven't doing its thing. But what I find so fascinating about this and what I have to give props, not only to Megan, but also to her partner in life and in business, Woody, is the selection of cask. Yeah. My fucking God. They have treated this whiskey properly. And for that reason, it is a fucking massive oosh. Boom. Love it. <laughs> Woody is a genius. Woody is a genius. You're a genius as well. You're both genius. <laughs> You're the neuroscientist. Genii. <laughs> You're the genius. Megan. <laughs> The Bunnahaven, number one, two, or three. Where do you, is it your favorite? Is it your least favorite? Where does it sit? Go on, the Pulteney was number two. Ugh, I want to say number two again, because it's joint with the Pulteney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Am I allowed to join it, the two? You, you can give it a joint if you want. Uh, two joint seconds. Pulteney and Bunna in close second. <laughs> All right. Yes. Which means the Ben Nevis is obviously a first for you, Megan. I love it. Cool. Stevie. Stevie. I really enjoyed this. This is... And oosh, oosh from me. Love and it. remind me on price point, uh, it's under 90 quid again, right? It's about 90. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking awesome. I love that sweet. I actually think it's 85. Yeah. Oh my God, sweet pastry, single cast Ben Nevis with that strong sulfur. That for me, you know how I like a kick in the face. Yep. That did it for me, so Boom. props. Yep. Love it's it. oosh for me. Oh, oh shit. shit. Two ooshes. <laughs> Mate, hold tight because there's a third oh. coming. Oosh! Oh my <laughs> god, this nine year old, 58% flat. Really love what you've done with the blood tubs. I love experimentation within whiskey. It's what it's all about. It's also about getting it in bottle at an affordable price. Yes. And the idea that dip, dip. all three. Not just one of them, but all three of these whiskeys are less than a hundred pounds. It's ridiculous. It's a fucking win. It is fucking it's ridiculous. ridiculous. I think Megan maybe needs a head examined from a price point of view. <laughs> the irony, right? I am not going to argue it. Uh, don't, I'm gonna, don't it's say the that. zero I, marketing. It I, works. I'm going to load my basket <laughs> up before she gets her head examined to make sure I can take advantage <laughs> of these prices. Oh. Three delicious whiskeys. I'm going to obviously your favorite. I. It's close call. 
But yes. Just edging them out. But my it's not my favourite of our releases, actually. But it's the favourite of these three? These three, yes. And tell us, for everyone at home, why is it your favourite? What's gone into this that makes it your favourite? It's the complexity. It's just got everything in it. Minus it Pete, but it's got everything in it. It does, it does, it does. Minus Pete, you're absolutely right. It's got a lot within that glass. Yeah. I must say, like... Ooh. Hats off, like, be proud of yourselves for what you're putting out in a market today at that price. Exceptional. Mm -hmm. It's Exceptional. really fucking impressive. Yeah. Really impressive. Also, I quit my job as a neuroscientist two days ago. <laughs> I tell you what, fucking well done. You made the right decision because <laughs> I don't know how good you are as a neuroscientist, but you're absolutely fantastic. Well, it was so hard buffalo. juggling two things at once. For sure. And I was like, nah. I well, mean, if our you... brains have been rewired by these whiskeys anyway. <laughs> For so. sure. You're still in neuroscience to some degree. Just Megan. destroying them instead of building them. And if you were putting out this sort of stuff while you had a second job, if this is full time now, I'm it's really full -time now. looking forward to what's coming from you guys. Oh, thank you. you know what you're doing. Guys, keep your eyes out for Woodrose of Edinburgh, an exceptional independent bottler. Megan, it's been so wonderful chatting with you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so Megan, much. sharing these wonderful whiskeys. Have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you soon. You hopefully. too. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Bye. <laughs> uh, Megan, Megan, tell us, what else do you have on the... What else do you have on the stand? All right, we'll come by. We'll come and share some wares. Yes. Do I like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll be there. We'll be we'll there. Come by. We'll share some stuff. We've got some stuff as well. <laughs> cool. Thanks, nice Megan. Megan. Lovely. Wow. Oh my gosh. That really surprised me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Listen, new indies popping up all the time, right? Sometimes they can be disappointing. Let's be honest. This is it, Let's right? Be fucking honest. So I didn't know what to expect, but that fucking blew me away. Like, cool. I am not only blown away by the quality of spirit, but as we have said time and time again throughout Megan being here, the fact that they are putting it out at that price point, the price is exceptional. Yeah. Now, gents, I'm going to run off to the bathroom quickly. You go for it, mate. We've had three brands. We've got our fourth coming up. Yeah. One of you want to hunt them down? I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, guys. There might be a little bit of an interim here. We'll keep the audio running and keep the cameras rolling. Um, yes. Wow, I was impressed. Really fucking impressed. I'm not just saying that because we're here and we had them here, but that, I just, the quality and the price point is just, is normally unmatched. Do you know what I mean? I've heard very good things in the past. From those guys? Yeah, but I haven't tasted any myself. That's right. one of the reasons why I wanted to get Megan and Woody over good fucking um, shout man and i am so fucking pleased we did and i really hope some more people like hear what they've got you know see the quality of what they're releasing and go try some of their shit yeah no i think if, if people if you by the way guys we're two hours and 15 minutes in thank you if you're still listening um and if you have got this far go check those guys out because that was seriously impressive for that price point i don't think you could beat uh, value for money on those liquids right there. Not for me. In, in an indie like, market yeah, today, anyway. It's, it's so hard. Like, you know, there's probably a few kind of like beardy grognards out there who are kind of yeah. looking back to prices five years ago. And we, oh, it sounds good, expensive stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just look on any online shop. Like, you're not going to find anything better than that at the minute. Not single cast burner, single cast Ben Nevis, no. you know, at uh, that. Hey. Um, right, shall I go see if I can find Grant? Well, it means you can leave me here with the audience, but I'm sure I can... Uh... Oh, no, wait, we're Cattenheads, aren't we? Yeah, from Cattenheads. Oh, sorry, yes. I thought you said Glenn Grant. No, just Grant. Oh, just, just Grant. Gr just Grant. Not Glenn and Grant. Just Mate, Grant yeah, go here, take the phone, put it in selfie mode. Jake's back already. That cool. was the fastest piss in history. There we go. Go for it, my dude. Right, we're going. Did I, uh, did I hear you bought some yum yums, mate? Because I'm getting a bit peckish. So here's another plug. <laughs> I love that there's a prime on this. Oh my fucking god. Jesus, this is one whole one for me? Guys, I've had yum yums from Marks and Spencer's. I'm sorry. Bomb. What is that? There you go. Yeah. What is that? How you doing? Hey mate, how are you? Okay. I'm good. Nice to meet you, mate. So are you are you one of the podcasters? We are, mate. We're live. Come in. What do you want to say? What do you want to do? We are live. 
Take a seat right now. You've got five minutes. There's someone coming. When they come, you're going to have to jump out the seat. But <laughs> You all right, my guy? How are you, mate? What's your name? Isaac. Isaac on... Isaac, the pull, pull the we mic in. How are we, you boys? How are we? We've had a uh, festival attendee it. jump in the hot I'm seat here. It. I'm loving it. It's are you enjoying the show more importantly? Mate, it's, it's been mega. It's been mega. It's been, it's, uh, what, what have you had in your glass thus far that's standing out, that's oh, tasting good? I did, um, I did like the bloody weir. The, the, you know, the 14 year old. The 14 year old. Uh, festival bustling, Brack yeah, yeah. what do we think of it? I think it's brilliant. It's stunning, yeah, right? It's brilliant. It's uh, stunning. Great nose to it. Uh, the taste, the colour, it's just all round. It's brilliant. For sure. It's brilliant, 100%. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Anything else that's standing out? Any other brands or anything in particular? Um, um, I, I did love the... Uh, what's the independent bottle in Campbelltown? The... Uh, Cuttonheads? Yeah. Cuttonheads. I, I thought they were brilliant. They're literally coming over now. Yeah, going to jump in the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over, I so. thought they were brilliant. I tried their PX, 13-year-olds. Cask and brilliant pricing as well. For sure. Oh, brilliant pricing. For sure, for sure. Um, I have to say, have you tried the Woodrow stuff? I've not. We were just having Woodrow on. Megan very kindly shared three delicious whiskeys. Really? We talk about price point. Okay. Very difficult to hit for independent bottlers yeah, nowadays. Yeah, 100%, now, obviously, Cannon Heads have been in the game for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Woodrow's have only started within the last year. Really? We tried a nine year old Ben Nevis, okay. a 15 year old Pontley, and an 11 year old Bunnerhaven. All ex. Yeah. Exceptional okay. quality and all less than hundred pounds. Cask strength, That's single brilliant. cask whiskies. That's brilliant. So I highly recommend you check okay. out the Woodrow. They're on that side of the room. Okay. A little bit further down, definitely check them out. This side of the, I did try a 15 year old Spin Harvin and a 15 year old Fletcher. On it this was, side? Yeah, yeah, it was independent bottling as well. Murray McDavid? Uh, no, it was um, Lime. Douglas Lang. Douglas Lang, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Really good. Good, all right. Especially, I, check I them out. tend to go for a more Peter's. Uh, whiskey over and on pieces. Okay. So the electric was more my taste than the Boone Haven, but that was brilliant. And that was about a hundred pound bottle. Fair enough. Uh, it Fair was enough. brilliant. It was really good. <laughs> so you're a local boy, are you? So I was, yeah, born in Edinburgh, but my family's from Newcastle. Okay. Cool. So when it comes to football, I'm a big, big Newcastle fan. Okay. Um, but yeah, born here, and I'm just with my uncle and my father-in-law as well. Fantastic. Yeah, All right. Bit yeah. of a day out, knees up, enjoying the whiskeys. Hundred percent. Cool. Cool. I love, I love how you guys are doing this. I think it's brilliant. I've not, I've not seen your podcast before, but I think it's brilliant. How you guys, you know, there's so many different things, but I saw it in the corner and I was like, I love it. It's great. <laughs> Listen, to be honest, we're blown away by the fact that we've been invited down to chat shite. Yeah, yeah. But no, uh, we're no, thoroughly no. enjoying ourselves. So thank you for noticing. Uh, honestly, yeah. it's brilliant. Isaac, uh, Isaac, I'm sorry. Lovely I'm to, to meet you. off the sofa. It's lovely nice to meet you. you. I'm going to see you out there later on. We've I'll got a few of our own whiskeys. It's lovely to meet you, mate. All right. Nice to, see you take later. care, Isaac. Nice one, my guy. <laughs> Guys, we are live. Anything can happen. We've just had a... Uh... Dude. Yeah, we'll see you in a bit. A nice one, Isaac. And we are back on the sofa. Ian has corralled one of the wonderful Captain Heads individuals. I'm sorry, I haven't met you before, sir. I'm Grant. Lovely to meet you, Grant. Please How are you, sir? I'm very well, yes. Can't complain at all. Thank you so much for coming with Ian. Really appreciate it. You've come to share a couple of whiskeys with us. I have indeed, yes. A uh, couple of... Well, one just out yesterday. One brand new brand whiskey new as of yesterday. yesterday okay, yes. cool. wow. So I've got uh, an inch a 13-year-old. Now, obviously everybody knows Springbank, and uh, we bought the Springbank PX last year. Yep. We've got these empty casts at Springbank, filled with PX. What are we going to do with them? So we put the inch Oh, nice. So oh. this has been one year in PX Sherry that previously contained the Springbank. Amazing. I really like that. Actually, that Springbank PX was a little bit... <laughs> Well, I might see controversial some people. I love it. But... Yes, but PX also is a big, big shit. Ten year old. Ten year old. Ten year old. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, so the, the Springbank PX is a big Sherry influence to it. Uh, obviously part of that, the Springbank Sherry series and stuff. There's the Pal Catardos coming out later on this year and stuff, so... But yeah, why not? Sister companies got these empty casks. Well, we're not... We'll use them for Cadenheads. It's an idea, like, Cadenheads are buying maybe 10, 15 casks at a time. 
we maybe all maturing in bourbon. Why not vary the alphabet? We're on YouTube. YouTube. Different uh, yeah. And it, it works as well. And, uh, especially when we are going to trade shows, people are looking for a bit of variety. And that's a fun stand just today. We've got some more stuff. So we're after maturing all the rows. So it's in Scour and PX. We've got a Manzanilla Sherry one there as well. Fantastic. Yeah, so there's a good bit of variation. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. Where should we start? We're going to start with the Inchcow? We'll go. Well, I think I'll actually go to the. Let me first because it's uh, a bit more lighter for cool. flavor profile. Cool. Let's do it. Brand new I, bottles as well. I'm really looking forward to this. Have you, not, you haven't tried this? I haven't tried it yet. No, no. Yeah, you've well, not. This, uh, was, this is pretty recent as well. It only came out in the last month. Yeah, it just came out in the last month. So this is a oh, new range. very new range. Yeah, it's the last range. Treating us. Treating us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Well, I, yeah, so I've not been able to get down to Chilton Street yet yeah. and um, yeah, yeah. get in to see the guys in London. But <laughs> Yes. Have you got into glass there? I do indeed, sir. Thank you very much, Ken. So, brand new Enigma from Cadden Heads. This is 15 year old. Uh, this is a blend, yeah? It is a blended malt. Blended oh, malt? Is it? Fantastic. Oh, wow. The nose on that. Yeah, good. Special guys. Anyway, lovely to meet you. Thank you. I've got to join you. So this is a mix of Kilcarran and Hazelburn. Kilcarran and Hazelburn, yes. So the whole idea of this Enigma range, obviously independent bosser, we were buying cans from the newest places. Sometimes okay. we're and buy whiskey that we can't name. So this is where the whole Enigma range comes in. It's a bit mysterious. To, yes, we if we know it, we'll talk about it and taste it and stuff. For sure. But if we can't name it, so. Okay, yes, we know this one is called here in the Hayes one because we've done it ourselves. We've got one on the stand which is a 25 year old blended box, uh, blended whiskey as well. Okay. Uh, we don't know the contents of that one. So that's where the Enigma part comes in. Oh. We use a bit of mysterious thing. We talk about it. It's Wrong. good quality. That's the main thing. We know it's good. Uh, get people trying it, come to trade shows like this, and then open a bottle, share it amongst everybody. Uh, but that's the. And then we've got more coming in the market now. So looking at the next release as well. What other ones? Yes. Like for instance, Highland <laughs> Park sell a lot of the Whitlock. We right. buy in that quite often. So instead of bottling it as Whitlock, we'll just put it in the Enigma range. Cool. So that's the whole idea of the Enigma range for us. Cool, lovely. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Grant, I was a bit busy there chatting to someone. Um, what is this, 50 50 or? The, the mixture of the Kilcairn against his one has not been disclosed to myself. So it's not, okay. It's not, it's hard. Okay. Uh, so yeah, 16 I'm getting Kilcairn, a lot like, more Kilcarran in here than the Hazelburn. I think there's more Kilcarran towards really? Hazelburn. Yeah. See, to me, I think it's more evenly balanced, but the Kilcarran is more potent. Yes. And so the Hazelburn is way drawn back, right? But I still think there's a good amount of it. Mm. Yep, that's but what I'm it's, feeling. It's got, you know, the Kilcarran characteristics there, but that, that, that wee bit of peaty, the smokiness in the background is that Kilcarran style. If you think against, comparing against the Kilcarran 16 year olds, there is that influence there to it. Yeah. Uh, but then again, you think of Hazelburn, which is triple distilled. So that light floral fruity notes to it as well, which is there. But again, Kilcairn can be that light floral fruity note as well to it. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I suppose I I don't think of Kilcairn as that light floral fruit fruity note. Generally speaking. Um, I Saying that though, the when we tried the uh, cleric at the distillery, it was very fruity. Right, yeah, for you sure, know, and high quality cleric as well, for sure. Correct, and, yeah. You know, as we were saying there, we were all surprised by that, I think. Mm. But, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting that you're all saying, where are you sat on this, Ian? Sorry, do you think that this is predominantly Kilcarran as well? It's, it's really interesting because you, especially at that kind of age point, you um, predominantly see hazel burning sherry, at least certainly in terms of what I've been buying, some of the cage bottles that I've lucky enough to get. Um, I have finally managed to get my hands on the 23-year-old bourbon, hazel bourbon, but I haven't... You haven't opened it. I like, well, not even picking it up until tomorrow. Oh, right. Yeah. So I can't try it. Um, it's going to be really interesting to maybe kind of look at that and compare what kind of slightly older bourbon hazel bourbon is, because normally you, yeah, it sits there in the kind of 10, etc. And actually, this year's 10-year-old, I've heard a rumor that there is some older stock yeah. in it. Um, 
And actually, I'm getting some of those kind of flavors from this that I am from the sample of the 10-year-old that I, I, I have at home. Right. Um, so actually, I am kind of more with you that it's maybe kind of 50-50 or maybe even slightly towards the Hazelburn end. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. That's where I'm going, right? You're that's wrong. That's kind of where I was going. And it's really, and we, as soon as you said it, Grant, I was like, all right, I'll shut up. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy knows what he's talking about. I'm a fucking idiot, right? No, I saw that. But I would say it's more Hazelburn. Get the on there. And... Um, Sorry, yeah, I tell you what, let's put it up here. Just yeah, so get product, product placement and all that. I have to say, beautiful, beautiful labels. I really love the green bottle. I really love the label. That, yeah. that stands out quite nicely. This is, again, going back to, for people who know the old sort of kind of hair bottlings with the screen printed green bottles. Aye. And that's just going back to it. And then that's as well thinking, we don't want people drawn to any colour. So the green bottle are not, if it's going to be dark, heavy, sherry, right. they're not drawn to that. It is a case of that mysterious enigma, not knowing what it is. I love that. Color. I love the fact that, that you have thought that through so carefully. And I love that explanation for a green bottle. I tell you what, no other brand can explain a green bottle the way that you just explained a green bottle there. So thank you so much. And thank you, sir, because you've just given me a prop to make a very good fucking point. I appreciate you. I'm going to catch you in a minute. That guy's a fucking legend. Uh, like, so true, right? So true. We should be focusing on what's in the bottle. And how are we going to focus on that? Well, we're going to get it in our fucking glass and we're going to try it, right? And this is so good. I, I do. I think it's more Hazelburn. I want to sit down with the sit people down. at Cambridge. I don't agree. I disagree. And, and understand I can't wait till uh, I want to be proven someone wrong. like Andrew or something puts us in our place, you know? Hey, <laughs> listen, if you know, drop a comment, put us in our place right <laughs> now. I love it. Wait till we get that DM. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is six, 65 pounds? 65 pounds, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it goes in the company policy, it is, you know, good quality and price point is yeah. straight to it, you know. And it is bought for drinking and opening and joint, simple as. Uh, we've got the 25 year old in the stand, it's 70 pounds. A 25 year old blends. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's my sorry, is that still Enigma as well? That's Enigma, yes. It's, it's, it's obviously, that's a different blend, right? Because obviously there is not Kilcarran or Hazelburn of 25 year old age, right? That's right, yeah. So, and that's uh, again, it just okay. That one was totally bought in. I uh, blend, but I'm not sure what's in the content of it. Got a sample of it, yeah, it's good. Price point, perfect. Bottle it, put it on the market. That's all nice. matters. And that's an interesting one as well because there is that the snobbery when you see blend on the label. Or prefer saying them all. She says, Have you tried this one? No, well, try it. You're not sure. You know, you're supposed to hear on sample. Just give out a sample and get your own opinion against it. So Definitely. that's what it's all about. Definitely. I have to say, I agree with you 100%. Blended malt, not only a, a huge growing category, but also a category that needs a bit more attention. Just because there's more than one ingredient within a whiskey doesn't mean that it's not going to taste delicious. Yeah. And I think we can use this as case in point, right? Yeah. This is fucking delicious. I'm sorry, did you just, how much did you say this was? 65 pounds. I thought I miss fucking heard that. <laughs> Six, <laughs> I know, five pounds for 15 year old kill Karen and Hazel. Yeah. Fuck off. What else do you want? Like, just, Jesus, this is good. Really, really good. Yeah. Great value. Again, it's not past strength, I would say. That is. It is. It is. Oh, really? Sorry. No, that's 48.2. That's yeah. a low cast strength. Uh, but if you think of the... I was going to say, you've brought this down to a really nice point. No, uh, that's natural. Uh, if you look at some of the Hazelburn and Sherry series we've done, they're all about 48, 50. They're not really high. They're natural strengths, again. So okay. it's one of these... We're discussing it at the stand earlier on with somebody. It's, sometimes we do find that with the Hazelburn, it's dropping in strength quite a bit. For sure. Is that because it's shriveled still? Yes, the cast are filled at 63.5, but they, yeah, they're, they're losing a lot of strength. That's really interesting. <laughs> and it works. It, it works so yeah. well. So. Now, and it, again, it's nice. Okay, it takes water as well. That's the great thing about it. It takes water, but it doesn't need water. It's nice to experiment with water and see how it opens up and releases any other Oh, we need to get him on. And you get more of that camouflage style coming through the water. Sure. Probably, yes. You are getting that more salty briny water coming through. This, um, this, Touching water, but again, that's all preference and playing about with adding water. For sure, for sure. Very cool. I love this. I'm going to be keeping my eyes open for this. It's interesting you say that. It's great. It is good. It's a good balance. You're not and enjoying it? No, I'm enjoying it. But? Right. 
I'm not as excited as you. What? We need the fucking like comedy cane to get get this guy off. Because this is the second thing? time what? this has happened to like this <laughs> comedy cane. Yeah, you do. You yeah. need to be joined off. Do you know whose show this is, mate? <laughs> Jake's. <laughs> <laughs> Without without me, he is nothing. <laughs> he is nothing. He'd have no platform. No, listen. On a real note, this is delicious, right? Yeah. I believe it's not, there is. It's not impressing you to that higher level. No, it's not. What? It's not. It's talk to me. Listen. I don't agree. There's more Hazel Burn than Kill Karen. I really think that Kill Karen's coming through here. I'm sure I'd be proved wrong. Whatever. Okay, but go on. Anyway. 15 years old. Car strength. For how much did you say? Sixty-five pounds. It's pretty good. Did it's pretty that? good. Sixty-five pounds. Did we get that in there? Yeah. <laughs> Should we do it again? Sixty-five <laughs> pounds. Fuck! <laughs> it's too good. But you know what I'm like when it comes to whiskey and being dominated in the mouth. And you just buy it. Too light. <laughs> what yeah, is it? I do. I think it's too light for me. Is, I, I think. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy. It. And sorry, I'm not. Yeah. You know. It's lovely. It's got that that, that kill Karen fruitiness here. Sorry, don't it's got that. Now, mate. You're halfway down offending him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not having him over for. But yeah, I'm just really surprised you guys I are really what, liking Steve, it so I'm much. I'm going to buy a bottle and I'm going to leave it sealed for you. And I'm going to give it to you in a couple of years. This is the other thing as well, right? This is a, this is the neck ball. This is a fresh bottle. No, no, I don't think it's even that. Yeah, you I know. think that in a year or two, you will kick yourself for saying this. I'm sure I will. I think you will yeah, because yeah. the complexity, the depth. And listen. The execution of this dram is really fucking good. I'm shocked that you're not... Like, it works really, really well. Like the balance between the two is incredible. I'm really interested to know whether you're going to buy this or not. But I'm not like... I'm ready to smack you in the face just so you know <laughs> if you're not going to buy it. You're going to find I'll another... Be, I'll give him one you and then another sure, one for a myself. Nice, a clean, yeah. firm back. You boys need to find another producer if you do that because... Uh... Right. <laughs> but no, listen, it's great. It is great. Um, and do you know what? I really love that label. I haven't seen I that label before. Full stop. Yeah, 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 yeah the, for sure, the, the, for the sure. Bottle, the label, the idea, it's well thought through, it's perfectly executed. And despite what Stevie says, the liquid is, it is sublime. <laughs> uh, but we will move swiftly on and we're going to find out whether Ian's, uh, whether sorry, Stevie is going to buy this in a minute or not. Grant, you very kindly bought a second bottle, yes, which sure. we talked about briefly at the beginning. This is an Inchgower. Inchgower, yes. Inchgower, obviously, one of the workhorse distilleries belonging to Diageo. Typically, you see it as quite a, well, I would say anyway, quite a light style, right? It's quite a, a, an easy going mop. Yeah, definitely. Is, yeah. But I think it takes sherry quite well as well. So, I was, so you popped this into a second fill sherry cask. That contains spring bank. That previously matured spring bank. Now, how yes. long was the spring bank in there for? So that was the spring bank series as PX sherry. So that yes. was a full... It was oh, the no, full 10-year, no, or was it finished? Finish. Yeah, for, 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 like, a five-year finish. A five-year finish. Yeah, yeah was okay. So pretty, it was a secondary but, maturation. Sure, for sure. Right? Yeah, it was double matured, right. So five years with spring bank in the sherry cask. And is it's it in PX, 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 yeah. PX. PX. Yeah. And then straight away, Inchgower bunged in there 13 years. So, so, so a year in the, the PX sherry cask. So yeah, it's 13 old whiskey, one year in the... So first 12 years, I was in a bourbon cask and then the last year in the PX. So that's single cast bottling, 324 and 58.3% alcohol. 58.3, lovely. Nice. I'm going to rinse it the glass. Gents, pass your glasses full <laughs> of the ground there. Yeah, poured in the face. Have you been so rude? Yeah. That was not rude. Am I not allowed an opinion? No. No, apparently no, not. Wrong opinion. Yeah. Apparently not. <laughs> Grant, thank you so much for sharing two wonderful drams. So 13 and sorry, 58.3, you said. 58.3, yeah. 58.3. Sorry, Grant, how long has this spent the time in the X? A year. A year, okay. You did say a year in the Yes, year. a year. So, yep. So, 12 years in a bourbon cask and then the, the year in the PX. And would this have been a bourbon cask that was kind of, you know, straight from Diageo, hasn't yes. been touched, yes. fairly, you know, refilled? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, again, you know, same idea. If we are buying in 
seeing the parcel we came in maybe about 10 casts came in all the tuning away in bourbon casts just to vary it up a bit and this is where uh, yeah you've got to see if, if we're bought on that okay that hits 13 years old now if we bought another one next year it might be coming from that bourbon parcel and that's the way we vary it up a wee bit by PX Manzanilla all these different sherry casts we're buying in again working with the, our sister company when we're buying in these sherry casts why not buy in some more for using the car and head range as well definitely we've got the facilities there to do it so why not cool. what's the price point on this one Grant? this one here is I'm going to say 55 or 65 oh wow. okay it's reasonable That's very reasonable. reasonable yeah for a single cast cast strength yeah cannot argue with that at all no yeah, so just brand new in the market yesterday. So, if you any other Cadden Head Club members got the email, it was a, a couple of weeks ago saying it's coming out, and then that's it available. So, you're a member, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I think these guys are Springbank sizes. Well, I'm also in the Cadden Head Club. I'm really interested to try the Ben Rinnis that I think is coming out. I so I was at, I, it wasn't at the festival this year, but it was last year, and there was a 25 year old veteran in the big cat and heads tasting yeah. that would now be 26. So I'm yes. kind of wondering whether that's oh, maybe very, very possible. Sometimes when we're doing the are using the whiskies in these tastings at the festival, they're earmarked for bottling in the next year. Very, yeah. very possible. So yeah. uh, and that I remember that being delicious at the time. I have literally, whilst we've been here recording, had a text from um, one of my mates back in London who's been like, oh, it's been the Chilton Street. I tried the Ben Rinnis, it's amazing, a bought bowl. I'm now, I now have FOMO. So you, you've been to the shop in the Chilton Street then? A couple of times, yeah. yeah. yeah I need to need to pop back in. Yeah, it's a great shop, so something to look forward to. We're hopefully trying to arrange a club tasting in November down in London. Okay, yeah, nice. So yeah, look out for the details of that one. So. Yeah, we, we were at the um, with David at the Springbank size tasting in London back in, God, when was that? Was that July? June? July? Yeah. July. At some point then, yeah. Was that the Melody? That was the Melody. That's yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, it was, that was very good. Yeah, yes, it was we, good. We tried the, uh, you mentioned the Palo Cotado. So yeah, there's a cask sample of cask that. Sample. Something's teasing you, you can exactly. try it, but you can't buy it yet. Yeah. Oh, really? That was the it's only sample? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, I we had that. the 18-year-old, and then, um, again, we did some filming at the um, Edinburgh Whiskey Fringe, and then I, I enjoyed the 18 so much there. Like, you know, went out and bought a bottle. They had some at the shop. It was the only place I was able to find one, so amazing. That's no, good. Even the, for us, okay, yes, we're always going to be associated with Springbank. We're always in the same umbrella. But even if, for ones who have been down at Camelot and have been down there recently yourself, we're doing a lot more and making the experience separate. You know, yes, you've got the washback bar at Springbank. We've now got a tasting room bar at the back of the shop at Cadden Heads. Really Love. beautiful yeah. tasting room. And you, room you now have your own that. blending experience as well. Oh, right? blending experience as well. Again, that's a something different from the Springbank one you can go in you try eight different whiskies that are totally blends you you know and then you've got the, it's all done that's the great thing with the blending it is it's your own preference you're sampling the eight whiskies and then you're playing about and making your own whiskey and then yeah. and presumably with the Cadenheads one you're not in just you know, with the Springbank range right you've got strength. different whiskies different there different whiskies yeah and so again okay. really diverse 13. with the experiences that you're offering I love that I have to say we are still now, we obviously, we visited Campbelltown in January, nearly, well, 10 months now, nearly nearly a year later, and we are still talking about that. Yeah. Every month, every time we meet up, we're talking about, oh my God, do you remember this? Do you remember that? I still proudly, proudly, proudly am drinking my coffees out of my prized possessions, which are my long roll, <laughs> my spring bank coffee cups. Yeah. And every fucking morning, I'm just there like, fuck, this is good, right? Yeah. Do you think Campbell's on as well? There you go. Do you know what I'm most disappointed about? That I didn't stock up more on Donald's marmalade. I know. <laughs> I'll tell you oh, what, mate. the blueberry jam, the marmalade, all of it, it just went, man. Oh. Even the chutney, right? Do you know what's funny is I actually found found a jar of that in the cupboard, like a quarter of the jar that Nothing I got left. back. Well, it is about a quarter left and it had a bit of mold on top. 
still tastes good. It was too good to waste. Yeah, mate. I'm still here. That's fucking props to Donald. Cast strength spring bank with you. You're golden, right? You'll fight on anything. All that sugar is fine. I love it. We also visited the Captain Head shop there, and we were very kindly given. Well, you guys were given a 32-year-old Jura. 31 Jura. That was, and that blew you guys away, considering you're not. Normally, big fans of Jura, right? So blew me away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was exceptional. And you guys have got the bar all finished now, and everything like that in the back. Yeah, so also the through the back the blending lab, and then through the back the tasting room as well. So and then the expanding to the, doing the courtyard yep. and stuff as well. So it's a uh, the way the company look at it. Does it make sense having two bars in Camelton and they're not competing against one another? Well, the two companies can survive side by side, you know, so we don't need one to sell the other. And what have you. Yes, it helps us having been an umbrella as Jeannie Mitchell and the Springbank and stuff, but it uh, goes down to the company's ethos of employing more people. Uh, you know, yes, we've got two bars and these two staff members, a lot of staff members have run the two bars. Why not? If the company can uh, have the you know, 120 people within the company. Why not? And that's well, you guys are getting busier and busier every year, yeah. right? So it I makes sense. The, you know, the, the Malts Festival, how big can the Malts Festival be? Uh, and it's, you know, it used to be that kind of spring night day. And then, okay, we started doing the, the Friday with the, the Bengal Cad and Head Day. We've got Glen Scotia involved on the Wednesday. You know, Ben and Tart do a Tuesday. And then with all these new distilleries that are in the pipeline, you know, it's going to be a kind of a longer, a week long experience. Accommodation, yes, you'll struggle at accommodation, <laughs> that's the big yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, great experience. And, Amazing. And that's in, we've got people who make the effort to get to Camelton, we want to make sure they go away saying, yes, that is well worth the visit. It's, you know, okay, three hours from Glasgow, but it is worth it. You go down to Camelton, we say, yeah, the experience you get in Camelton, between doing the, the tours at Springbank, plenty of Warehouse tastings at Cadden Heads, you can go and say, definitely a place to visit. Yeah. Second sure? to none when it comes to whiskey experiences that I've had thus far. So uh, yeah, I can only echo your 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 sentiment there, Grant. A hundred percent. Is it worth the visit? It fucking well is worth the visit. It's real, it's authentic, it's humble, it's just And also you yeah. just feel Love like it. I mean, we went on the Eat, Sleep, Germ, Repeat tour, Definitely and I is. felt like maybe we were treated like kings at some points. <laughs> However, throughout the whole journey, we were treated like Campbelltonians. Do you know what I mean? I felt like part of the furniture. And it's it was there was no different between how we, you know, someone was talking to someone else that worked there, and they were talking to me, and everyone was every, yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. And that's I thing, loved it. The whole experience. You are working or being with the workers. Hi. You know, it's sometimes the, you may go to these experiences and you're with, I see a sales team or whatever who are not really within the brand, whereas Spring Mike sales team, the workers are physically there. They are the ones that are actually presenting these tours and tastings and being with you the, during that, that three day experience for the Eat Sleep yeah. Family Pete. And that's what people enjoy. Much more hands on. Hands on, you know, and even doing that whiskey school, you know, that the week long whiskey school, uh, physically turning the barley, rolling cast about. You you go away, you've done a day's work. For sure. You have for done a sure, day's work. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I love it. No, really, really cool. Gents, what do we think of the uh, of the inch tower? I'm getting yeah. of chocolate out of it. Chocolate. Yeah. Right. You know, milk. It's a chocolate. Yeah. Milk. Chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Milk or dark? Dark. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, 100%. Very interesting. Say, it's almost like, it's almost verging into like a coffee-esque in elements of it like there's really bitter notes at that point yeah, you know the PX because it's the refill PX which is, so it's not a big bold PX that kind of no. takes away the distilling characteristics yes you can tell it's it's still got a lot of bourbon influence there from this, you know, 12 years in the bourbon cask before it went into the PX. So it's there, and it's the, the still a character in Chicago, whereas, you know, like, okay, it's the main component of blend stuff like that, but it's still got body and bite to it, and then the PX influence there as well, that sort of sweetness and the darkness to it is there. It's worse. Definitely. Definitely. But are, you, are you crying out one time water to it? No. No, 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 no not at all. Sometimes these two... It's really you, nice, though. It's, it's not... You know, it takes water again, but it does not need water. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it needs water at all. I think it sits very nicely with the strength. Um, 
gents, will we give a bit of a wrap up on these two drams? Yeah. Let's do it. So, Sounds Grant, good. sorry for the podcast. We always do a buy, a don't buy, an oosh if it's really good, or a bin it if it's terrible. Yeah. I, I think you're okay. Don't worry. I'm okay. <laughs> you're all good on that one, I think. <laughs> oh, we, we will see. I don't know. Stevie, oh, yeah. Stevie yeah. is There's coming no to bin it. out of left field today. There's no bin it. However, you're going to be surprised. Okay. okay, I'm starting with the 15-year-old Enigma, and I'm just pressing my backhand. Yeah. Mate. I'm just ready to I, smack you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Sorry, how uh, much was this again? Six. Just, just once more? Okay. 65 pounds. 65 pounds? <laughs> now answer the question, buy or don't buy? It's going to be a buy, right? Okay. Oh, Do you know I why, though? Fuck for that. Because of, it's a peer pressure. Because of how much... Yeah, because he's worried about getting a smack in the face. No, 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 <laughs> nothing like that. I know you've been taking Taekwondo classes or whatever, but however, <laughs> listen, it's good, right? Okay. I, di- I don't get the fuss that you're making about it. Okay. I'm buying it on the back of the fuss you're making about it to, as you say, buy it, come back to it, let it sit for a while, you know, and then see where I'm at. It's good liquids. For sure. For price, how much? 65 pounds. How much was it, guys? It was 65 pounds! So, yeah, it's it's a buy from me. Okay. I just don't get the fuss right now. Okay. All right? That's fine. None of you have to get the fuss. So long as you're buying it, that's fine. Uh, this is the top two of my drams today. The, the value proposition what? is incredible. I can give it! Come on! Oosh. Oosh. Yes! Wow. I'm right there with him. I think that in a year or two, you might come back to this and go, fuck, I get what Which is why I'm buying about. a bottle. Yeah. And that's fine. Do, do it. Buy a bottle, tuck it away. This is a massive oosh. This is so yeah. good. Oh, Value see, for money. I've seen a bag of that. Can we actually buy them here? Yes. Oh, okay, fantastic. I'm, yeah, right, I'm going to run straight right, out. This is why I'm going to yeah. do oh, You better away. go, boys. We're yeah. going to go straight I'll out. I'm going to buy one now. The value for money on this is exceptional. And I would say best value for money here today from what we have tried. I love the fact that this is well thought through as a brand. I love the fact that you're not only going to be collaborating with Hazelburn and Kilkerran, Springbank owned brands, but also doing other expressions moving forward. I'm really right. excited to try some other enigmas now. You've got me excited about this range. You know, it's, it's something you see a lot of distilleries going down that route of not naming or selling a whiskey you can't name uh, try to protect their brand name uh, and that's what well, yes we could come up with something else marketing wise but thought Enigma a bit mysterious about it and then yeah go back to the green bottles and it's all about the whiskey two seconds man two seconds two seconds <laughs> okay, so, uh, Stevie, sorry, um, moving forward, and yeah, I've uh, got this up here. Pro- product placement again. Product placement, 13-year-old, inch gower. It's a don't buy from me. Sorry, sorry, for how much? For how much? 55 pounds. No, nah, it's a don't buy. This is a step down in price. It's a don't buy from me. 55 pounds, you don't like it? Sorry, Grant, sorry, Caddenheads. Why? Explain yourself. It just doesn't do it for me, right? It's there. I've tasted. It's just. It's. Listen, you know me. I like to be surprised. I like to be given something quite strong. It's just not for me. I'm afraid. It's just not for me. That's each to you know, his own. Exactly. Own. Exactly. Uh, Fifty-five pounds. I mean, that's no brainer. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. For sure. You know what? I have to say, I understand where you're coming from because for me, it doesn't quite tick the boxes. However, at 55 pounds, I'd be foolish not to buy it because it's different. And it's something that I'm going to stretch myself on. It's something that, to be honest, I would buy, and I sound like such a twat saying this. (laughs) Maybe I'm a bit of a twat, that's fine. (laughs) I would buy it to sit down and challenge myself writing tasting notes because I'm sitting here and I can't really specifically pick out this is it for me right is it's kind of just like yes yes I don't think that if it was my whiskey I would have left it in the PX longer I'll be honest with you Grant that's what I would have done I would have had this as a a 20 year old a 7 years in PX wow okay right because I think that there's a lot more to come from it. I think that it's strange, but at fifty-five pounds for a fifty-eight percent whiskey, I'm gonna buy it. Think, of course, I think there is try it. there is a huge amount of interest to it. I mean, not just because it's the Springbank DX casks. I think it's interesting on its own right. Is it the complete package? Probably not. But is it is it interesting? Is there a lot to find from it? Yes. 
yeah. is it great value? Yes. It's just not the finished article for me. And I what see where finished, you're coming right? from. No, no, I, I, I completely see where you're coming from. I do. And it, that's it. That's the thing. Each to his own. With whiskey, there is no right, there is no oh, wrong. Listen, it's yeah. just an opinion. And who's going to listen to me? Like, it's like absolutely you don't want one no one. I mean, you do weird and tease and stuff like that. If you have one clear winner, you may as well just got a bottle of that style of whiskey. Sure. And that's what we're trying yeah. to put. And that's the great thing. The cast varieties we've got in the stand today. Is there one clear winner? Okay, that's selling really well. The cam's on Enigma, but it's like there's, they're all selling. That's what you want. There is somebody, they've got a Jura on the stand. A lot of people are coming up. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Jura, but you've not tried this Jura. Oh, and like, that yeah, is yeah. nice for fucking Jura. In a good way. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and that, is, that was the, the Manzanilla, the, the Jura was bought in stand. All right, and okay. it, it works really well. I'm going to pop over in a bit and try yeah, that. Yeah, so. I tell you what, then, Grant, to finish this up, can I ask you which is your favourite of the two? Oh, the two? Okay, I'm buying some born and bred in camels. Oh, listen, of course. Yeah. But uh, side by side, it would be the camels on Enigma. But yes, the Inchgower having that again, it's got the the bourbon influences there, but then a wee bit of the PX influence in the back. So I do I do enjoy bourbon and whiskey, sure. and that uh, you know the camels on uh, blending malt. Yeah, it's got that bourbon influence to it, and it's the camels on style. So yeah, camels on Enigma for me. Fair play. Amazing. I have to agree. Campbelltown Enigma is a winner. Very excited <laughs> about that. I'm going to buy a few bottles for us, Stevie. I said I'll sure. buy a bottle. I'm going to make sure that we've got them stocked up. Grant, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for sharing these wares. with us. Everyone at home, uh, check out these two very, very new releases. You can buy them. Can you buy them online? Yes, uh, the, well, and the cams are not anymore. Lucky. Not anymore. The, the, sold out online. Yeah, sold out online. Uh, we've got some still available in the Cadenhead shops in the UK, so Edinburgh cams in London. The Inchgower is only available in the shops at the moment, but next Friday it will be available online. So keep your eyes open online, but again, just another reason to get down to these events, guys. You can only buy some of these bottles at the events, particularly at these retail prices. Or look into, you know, the Captain Heads Club and 50 quid for life. You get a polo shirt, a bunch of other stuff, and getting your emails. You know when stuff's coming out. Cool. You can reserve stuff in the shop. Two, three warehouse tastings a year if you go to Campbelltown. There we go. Yeah, there we go. You can't become a Springbank Society member anymore, so... Arguably, the Cadden Heads membership is the next best thing, thing if you are looking for it. Yeah. Grant, thank you so much for thank joining you. us, sir. Nice. Absolute pleasure. Thank Cheers. you for thank sharing you these much, wonderful indeed. whiskeys. Yeah. Uh, I thank think you, that's Grant. Us, it for now, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess We're gonna so. We're going to be back soon. Keep Sessions ending tuned, in seven minutes. And We're we will good. be out with another well, yeah, episode. Yeah, this has been a yeah, this has been a three hour episode. So thank you, thank, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, guys. Nice one, Grant. Thank you so much.